playoff game. The kick is up. The kick is good. Miami wins. It's taken 15 years for the Chiefs to make it back to the postseason. And this team is here largely on the strength of a solid defense and spectacular big play special teams accounting for all of their 24 points last week of the win over Pittsburgh. Their wild card opponents, the Jets, were once flying high. The Jets' defense decimated by injuries, so the offense carried the load to a record of 10-1, and one, but they have lost their last five games. O'Brien firing, and it is picked off by Lewis Green. There's Green with the second interception of the day, and the embarrassment continues. And today, Pat Ryan takes over for Ken O'Brien at quarterback. And the Jets also look to the return of Mark Gastineau. For the Chiefs, either Todd Blackledge or Bill Kenny will start at quarterback, a decision to be made just before kickoff. This is Marv Albert with Bob Greasy at the Meadowlands. We'll have more later, but now let's go to NFL 86 and Bob Costas. <laughs> Marv, thanks very much. You mentioned the last time the Chiefs were in the playoffs back in 1971. The last time the Chiefs and Jets met in postseason, 1969 at Shea Stadium in New York. The Jets were the defending Super Bowl champions. The Chiefs had gotten in as the original wild card team. There weren't enough teams in the old AFL then to go around. They took the second place team with the best overall record. That was Kansas City. And their defense stopped Matt Snell, Joe Namath and company on a cold, blustery day at Shea Stadium. The final score, Hank Stram's Chiefs 13 and Weeb Eubanks Jets 6. And the Chiefs went on from there. They beat the Raiders in the playoffs, a team that had beaten them twice. During the regular season, they went on to Super Bowl IV. And Stram, strutting the sidelines, beat Bud Grant and the Minnesota Vikings in the Super Bowl that year after they had begun the playoffs with that win at Shea against the Jets. 13 to 6. Let's go back out to the Meadowlands now, join Marv Albert's broadcast partner, Bob Greasy, and we're also joined by Don Shula, the Dolphin coach from his home down in Miami, and of course the Dolphins not in the playoffs for the first time since 1980. Coach, let's start with you and your thoughts on Joe Walton's choice of Pat Ryan over Ken O'Brien today. Well, evidently, uh, Walton knows a lot more about it than we do to make that decision. But I would have to myself go with uh, Ken O'Brien because he's the guy that got him there. And early in the year when they had that tremendous record, 10 and 1, he was the hottest quarterback in the AFC. And he wasn't doing it with mirrors. He was doing it with great performance. Last year he was in the Pro Bowl. He was the Pro Bowl quarterback. He is their franchise. So unless there is something physically wrong that we don't know about, I question that decision. Bob, your thoughts? Well, uh, I've got a lot of admiration for Don Shula, but I think if he was in the situation going through five games and losing, I think he would have made the choice. As a better late than never, Kenny O'Brien carried this team for the first 11 games. He did it all on his own. He's got that pressure. He's trying to do it, and he's trying to do too much. And I think uh, Joe Walton maybe could have done it a couple of games ago, but better late than never, I think it takes the pressure off of him and gets a fresh start, a new beginning in for the Jets with Pat Ryan. Bob, we know you were hurt during that 17-0 season, and that's why Earl Morrill quarterbacked most of the year. Do you ever recall Don Shula yanking you just because you stunk? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I, uh, we lost uh, three games in a row. In fact, we didn't score three games in a row, and Don Shula came to me and told me the situation. And really, I talked to Pat, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Kenny O'Brien before the game, and I said, it's happened to me before. There's life after being pulled, and you'll come back and be a good quarterback again. But... Uh, sometimes you don't like what's going on, but it's going to make you a better quarterback. Don, the Jets' slide began on that Monday night at the Orange Bowl when your team pasted them 45-3. Could you see something about the Jets there? Could you tell they were about to come apart? Of course, they had all those problems defensively, and we knew that they couldn't be as strong, and we wanted to go after them. Lance Mel was out of the lineup. Gastineau was out of the lineup. Joe Klecko was out of the lineup. And whenever you lose three super defensive players like that, you've got to be hurting. And they were patchwork, and they were able to get by, but we went after them, and we were able to control the ball. We had the ball in that ball game 
40 minutes to their 20 minutes. So that was ball control. When we have it, we're putting points on the board, and they can't do anything with it. And when they had it, we were able to stop them. Don, as the playoffs begin, it's pretty clear the best overall strength is in the NFC. What team in the AFC do you see as capable of going through and maybe winning the Super Bowl? Well, you got to like Cleveland and, and the great job that Marty Schottenheimer has done there. Uh, this is a, a fine defensive football team. Kozar in his second year has given them great leadership from the quarterback position. They've got a solid running game. They've got a possession, ball control type of passing game, and occasionally they'll go for the long ball. But they can hang on to the ball both running and passing, and they play great defense. Bob, have you got a pick? I like Cleveland at home. Bernie's playing very well, and uh, they're tough to beat up there. I think New England, though, is also going to be heard from uh, either with Eason or with uh, Steve Grogan. Let's have the two of you share some thoughts about a game we saw a glimpse of on Marv Albert's opening. That's the game 15 years ago, Christmas Day, 1971, and it was a victory for you fellas along the way to your first Super Bowl appearance, appearance rather, the six-period game in which you beat Kansas City 27-24. Either one of you. Well, it was an end of, the, uh, of an era for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, they have not been back to the playoffs for 15 years. That was when they had their great teams, and it was really the beginning for the Miami Dolphins. I can remember uh, coming back in that game time after time, and, and really, we played well enough to win, and if we didn't win, we could have said, well, it's all right, but we came back and we won, and I think that was really the start of our uh, championship uh, years. Don, how about matching wits with Hank Stram? Well, that had to be one of the great ball games of all time. It had a little bit of everything. It had offense, defense, it had special teams. And then we got into the uh, sudden death period and uh, the ball, it was going back and forth. The, the great call by Bob Greasy on the draw play by Zonka was the play that set up the field goal by Garrow. And then, of course, Garrow uh, knocked it through there and we were a happy bunch because that game is what started us on to Super Bowl championship. Don Shula, thank you. Bob Greasy will hear from you with Marv Albert later in the day, and Don will be with us in the studio next week as the AFC playoffs continue. We'll be back with Paul McGuire and Ahmad Rashad in just a moment. Stay with us. NFL 86, the AFC wild card, is brought to you by Taco Bell, the cure for the common meal. By the 1987 German-engineered Volkswagens and your Volkswagen dealers. And by Transamerica. For insurance and financial services, the power of the pyramid is working for you. It's your last chance to steal a deal on the full line of Volkswagens. Right now through December 31st, you can get a great deal on a Volkswagen Jetta, the best-selling European import in the U.S. Or make your best offer on a Volkswagen Golf. It's the best-selling car in all of Europe. Hurry in. December 31st will be your last chance to steal a deal on a Volkswagen. And missing out will be a crime. We give 110 <laughs> percent. So does Speed Stick Antiperspirant. Why? Nothing fights wetness and odor better. That's 110 percent protection that glides on dry. That's your edge. Speed Stick Antiperspirant, the wide stick. By Menon. Skin Bracer Aftershave has what it takes to cool, soothe, tone, tighten, and to wake up your face. Thanks. I needed that. After every shave, it has what your face needs. Skin Bracer. Brighten your color, sharpen your sound with high-tech components designed to astound. Brighten your life with Everstar. Amazing new features, the ultimate bright. Step into the future, we'll open your eyes. Fine tune your life. Never should feel so right. Fine tune your life with Everson. I want to talk to you about something that could change your life. Insurance. This is a policy from one of the world's biggest insurance specialists. For almost any kind of insurance. Because you just never know when you're going to need insurance. Excuse me. Hey, you big ape! You know who has to pay for this mess? Transamerica. For insurance and financial services, the power of the pyramid is working for you. Okay, back out now to the Meadowlands. Ahmad Rashad is standing by. Ahmad, a couple of questions. I see you with the overcoat on. 
first of all, the weather conditions, and secondly, well, take the weather first, then I'll pose the second question. Well, Bob, it's about 36 degrees out here, and no wind at all. It's a wonderful day for playing football. All right, we heard Marv Albert say that the Blackledge Kenny decision won't be made until just before kickoff. You got any thoughts? Yeah, I've been down here among the players in the warm-ups, and Todd Blackledge will start. And the players feel very confident about that. But Kenny will be, you know, he'll be on the side and he'll be prepared to play. You know, this is, it's a great day out here. I've never seen so many game faces at this stadium. And that's just the people here in the stands. Or the guys in the field are really ready to play. But, you know, every, every team in the National Football League goes through some turbulence during the course of a season. But coaches like to say, if you can keep chipping away, win a few games here, a few games there, you can stay in contention for the playoffs. Well, the Jets had their own way of doing it. They played well, they were up, and then they were down. I guess if you look back at their season, it reads sort of like a movie title, A Tale of Two Seasons. But the guy that really impressed me over the day was Ken O'Brien. Late in the game, he got hurt, he had a chance to go out. He came back in. He showed his medal. He came, up, came back in and threw the winning touchdown. I think that he has uh, evolved into a great quarterback. He really played well today. Wesley Walker, 11-yard pickup for the first down. Gets in a hurry-up offense with the clock running. Deep for sure, right open. So many talented people that uh, at any time we can explode, we feel like somebody's going to make the play and we just have to work hard. I'll get the ball to the right person. They'll make somebody miss. We'll score. We'll win. And as long as there's time on the clock, we think we can get it done. The mark of a good football team is that in tough times, it bends, but it doesn't break. Against Miami in Week 12, the times got tough. The Jets traveled to the Orange Bowl in Miami with a 10-1 record and were embarrassed 45-3 in front of a national television audience. At that point, it all fell through. The Jets haven't won in the last five weeks. the best in football at one point and now we're in the doghouse so uh, all we can do is uh, pick ourselves up and hopefully respond uh, to what is happening and uh, we have one more chance and if you don't do it it's all over with so I hope everybody realizes that I think the change right now is going to help the whole team It's going to help uh, Kenny deal with the situation that he's in I think Pat Ryan has proven himself to be a quality quarterback uh, has proven that he can take us and lead us to victory and that's what we need right now we need that one victory to get over that slump. We overcame a lot uh, during the during the season. We won 10 games. Uh, we earned our way into the playoffs. Uh, they beat a lot of good football teams, and uh, I think they have to just gather themselves together and, and start again. There is so much pressure on this New York Jet football team. These players realize that if they don't win today, and it's only up to the players, the coach has nothing to do with this, if they don't win today, it's going to be a long offseason, one in which there will be quite a few personnel changes. Now, you talk about in football that football is a character builder. Well, at this level of the game, it doesn't build character, it reveals it. And that's what's on the line today for the Jets. My matchups, Toon and Walker against Kevin Ross and Albert Lewis, two of the best receivers against two of the best cornerbacks in the league. I talked to... Um, Lewis, and he said that they're going to play this, these guys man-to-man -man all over the field. And as a receiver, that's all you can ask for. You find out immediately just how good you are. Okay, Ahmad, thanks very much. As now. we've mentioned, today the Chiefs make their first postseason appearance since 1971. For that reason, and in a different sense, it makes it a special year in Kansas City, as Paul McGuire found out.
something special this Christmas for the Kansas City Chiefs. They're working. The Chiefs are in the playoffs for the first time since 1971. But what's of very special interest is how they got there. There's no doubt our, our special teams have uh, put us in into the playoffs throughout the entire year, all 16 games. The play of our special teams has enabled us to win, I'd say, 90% of our games. Former Rams and Redskins coach George Allen, who had many playoff teams because of the play of the special teams, once said, offense puts fans in the stands. Defense, well, they win ball games. But special teams, they win playoff games. That's because specialty teams can create big point swings and can change the momentum of a game. Case in point, last Sunday's game against Pittsburgh, a 10-point swing in 14 seconds as a Steeler field goal attempt turns into a Chiefs touchdown. Well, it's the quick change, you know, uh, making the big play. Uh, we, we are well drilled, and uh, we, we anticipate a lot out there on the field. And when we do have the, the chance, uh, the opportunity for the turnover, we have a thing called a jazz session. And we, everybody turns around, one guy gets the ball, and uh, everybody turns around and blocks. The guy that runs this finely tuned group is Coach Frank Gans. Not only does he tell him what to do, he does it with him. What we're trying to do is get the talents, the skills, the energies, the abilities of the athletes, all of those resources directed to the critical situation at hand, whatever it might be, whether it's returning a kickoff, covering a punt, blocking a punt, blocking a field goal. Those are the things that you have to do. Most plays in football last about six seconds, but kicking team plays last much longer than that. So you've got to stay with it longer, longer than the opponent, what we call finishing the play. The Chiefs also have the defense, led by the best secondary in football. Now the offense, that could be the problem. It sputtered most of the year due to inconsistent line play and finished the season ranked dead last. Hopefully, you know, starting this Sunday, our offense is aware that what's been going on and uh, it's going to take some of the pressure off us because, hey, when you're out there all that time, defense is on the field that much, turning the ball over, turning the ball over, good, giving good field position and uh, coming up with basically nothing, it, it, you know, it wears on them, not only physically but mentally. We try to think of ourselves as a total team, and we have been an opportunistic offense when we've won and played well. Pittsburgh game is a little bit misleading in how we've played during the year, but we'll take it. We'll take anything that we can get. But that's really been the earmark of our team. Our offense has been up and down, but when our offense plays well, we score points, and they really take advantage of situations and opportunities. And if that's the case, then we score enough points to win. All right. National Broadcasting Company presents the National Football League. Today, from Giant Stadium, it's the AFC Wild Card Game, the Kansas City Chiefs versus the New York Jets. Brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda Value. And by at and the right choice. A capacity crowd, 78,000 at Giant Stadium in the New Jersey Meadowlands on an overcast, brisk day, temperature at 36 degrees, and the Jets and the Chiefs are getting ready for this AFC wild card game. Hi, everybody. Marv Albert along with Bob Greasy. And as Ahmad Rashad mentioned a few moments ago on NFL 86, yes, Todd Blackledge will be the starting quarterback. So we have a tell of two starting quarterbacks who will not start this afternoon. One has been benched, the other sidelined by injury. But eventually we could see both Bill Kenny and Ken O'Brien. Well, Pat Ryan starts for the Jets, and I think it's a good move. It's a fresh start. The other players on the Jets can identify with it. He has no pressure on him. He can only be the hero, not the GOAT. But the key for the Jets today, I believe, Marv, is going to be Freeman McNeil. Joe Walton has called him the pulse of the offense in the past, and I think they want to get back and control the football on the ground. Bob, this is a strange playoff game. The Jets come in, losers of the last five during the regular season. Kansas City ranked number 28. That is last in offense. 
uh, in the National Football League. What do the Chiefs have to do to beat the Jets? Well, they want to downplay their offense, obviously. Don't make any mistakes. Rely on their defense, which leads the National Football League in takeaways, and their special teams, which scored three touchdowns last week. And the special teams have had a magnificent year, led by their coach, Frank Crash Gans. He has been an emotional leader for the Chiefs. He's done it with motivation. In fact, uh, on the flight uh, back home from Pittsburgh last week, the players gave him a standing ovation. And there's Jet special team coach Larry Pasquale. And he has had another successful season. In fact, Pasquale and Gans coached together at the Naval Academy in the late 70s. Head coach Joe Walt, who has seen his team lose five straight. At one point, they were 10 and 1. At one point, they won nine in a row. John Makovic, who may have saved his job with the finish of his ball club. Two of the best special team units in the National Football League here today, Marv, and we just met the two uh, coaches that handle those special team units, but it's very tough for the Chiefs to duplicate what they did last week, and that was to score those three touchdowns at Pittsburgh. Jets won the flip. A short kickoff as Lowry looked to keep it away from Humphrey and Townsell. But it is Townsell able to move up for a 13-yard advance. Walt Arnold on the stop. And here comes Pat Ryan and the Jet offensive unit. And the Jet wideouts have been taken out of it the last five games. Al Toon and Wesley Walker have been virtually invisible. The offensive line with uh, Joe Fields, despite the recent back problems in its center, as the Jets start out, first down at the 34. And it's McNeil for a yard, stopped by Dino Hackett. Hackett, the rookie from Appalachian State, playing despite a hamstring strain. Up front, a very solid unit. Uh, led by Bill Moss, who made it to the Pro Bowl for the first time this season. It didn't appear to me that Hackett had any hamstring problems the way he was jumping around there. Young linebackers in that linebacker group and a fine, outstanding set of defensive backs. They're calling it a second and eight. We are just underway at Giant Stadium. And Ryan had it batted. And it was picked off by Dan Alexander, the right guard, on the deflection. But a penalty flag is thrown. Not the way you want to start. Offensively, the ball was tipped, so an offensive lineman can catch the ball as Red Cashin makes the call to be third down. This is one of the Jet favorite uh, plays. Joe Walton bringing this over with him from the Washington Redskins. Ryan likes it. It's called a waggle. It's a half row. You either look to the tight end as Alexander makes the reception. <laughs> either the tight end or the flanker are the primary targets. Nice catch by the right guard, Dan Alexander. A third down and nine. And again it was deflected. And Ryan ended up throwing a pop fly. Good rush from Art Still who was all over Pat Ryan. Art still is 6'7", and uh, although he's got 10 sacks this year, I think his primary uh, rush is to get some penetration as we see him battling on Alexander, number uh, uh, King. He gets a pretty good pass rush, and uh, his height didn't do that. It was his force and his proximity uh, to uh, Pat Ryan. So Dave Jennings, who two weeks ago set the NFL record for most career punts, 1,000. 85 in all is back at his 20-yard line, and Jeff Smith awaiting the punt for Kansas City. Here's Smith, who is immediately hit. 32-yard punt. Marion Barber, who was a question mark for today's game, making the hit. Todd Blackledge now out of the field. He has Boyce Green and Larry Moriarty at the running backs. Mike Pruitt out with a knee sprain, placed on injured reserve, and Pruitt was the chief leading rusher with only 448 yards. Rick Donnelly has had a solid season. John Makovic says he has meant more to the offense 
than any other player. Rick Donnelly starting at center out of North Carolina. First down, Kansas City from their 33. And it's green. Short pickup. Lester Lyles, the strong safety on the stop. Up front, Lions, Bald, and Bennett. And we will see some of Mark Gastineau, who has uh, made it back following the arthroscopic knee surgery. Rusty Gilbo back from a knee injury, but Crable moves over to the left side, and the Jets secondary has had its ups and downs this season. Second and eight at the 35. Two minutes gone by. No score. completes for the first down at midfield. Henry Marshall stopped by Harry Hamilton. It's a 16-yard advance. Carter, 27, is up jamming uh, Marshall. He does a nice release to the inside and then breaks back to the outside. It's a good confidence builder for Blackledge to complete his first pass. Bob, an excellent block from the fullback, Larry Moriarty. Henry Marshall who has come on very strong in the second half of the season as a first down at the Jet 49. Off the play action. Pass intended for Stefan Page. Poor throw by Blackledge, what he likes to do is get the ball to his wide receivers. The Chiefs are not known for running the football, one of the poorest teams running the football in the last three years. And this man right here will fire the crowd up. If he can get in and do some things early in this game, it'll get the crowd involved and help the Jets immensely. He's missed the last five games. So Gastineau comes on for the second and ten. Boyce Green inside the 45. Kyle Clifton on the stop. Boyce Green in his fourth season out of Carson Newman. Take a look at Gastineau out where he can pass, rush the passer from an outside position. It's in a little piece of it, but the Jets have not rushed the passer this year, Marv, and that, uh, that affects directly the play of the secondary. just off the entry list. Even out with a sprained foot is now out to the right side. And it is completed to Henry Marshall for a first down. Russell Carter on the stop. So Marshall with his second reception. This good for 13 yards. Henry Marshall releases to the inside 89 and then goes across field as Page takes two defenders with him. Not a very good throw, but good enough for a first down. Kansas City first down of the Jet 31. Now Page to the right and Marshall 89 to the near side. Four minutes gone by in this first quarter with no score. The dump off for Green. Boyce Green inside the 25, tripped up by Rusty Gilbo and Todd Blackledge off to a good start. John Makovic calling the plays for Blackledge, throwing the simple short patterns, out patterns, good protection as MacArthur 67 to 57, and Blackledge with a nice lane to throw to Boyce Green. It's very important especially for a young quarterback who's been inconsistent as Blackledge has this year to start off on a positive note. As a second and three at the 24, Blackledge has connected on three of four for 36 yards. Green with a penalty flag throw. Boyce Green getting near that first down marker. Stopped by Clifton and Lyons. And we'll get the call from Red Cashin. Offside. 
against the Jets. Onside, number 94 on the defense. First down. That is the outside linebacker, Rusty Gilbo, back as a starter. He had been out with that uh, hyperextended knee. The Jets are the most penalized as the closest white jersey player the Jet is offside, Gilbo. Normally a defensive end in college has been playing linebacker, but Carson likes to have him blitz. He's such a big, strong individual, has a very good uh, way of getting in the quarterback's face on the blitzes. And it's a first down for Kansas City at the 19. A long drive, this is the seventh play being run by Blackland. And again to the crowd. Larry Moriarty. Stopped by Johnny Lynn. Now check that. Jeff Smith, uh, the ball carrier. Take a look at the point of attack. 85 as Hayes doubles down. Gilbo, 94. It's handled pretty well by Moriarty. Uh, nice enough to get the back inside of him. And uh, Gilbo has been out with an injury problem uh, most of the year. Came back. He's out and missed last week's game. And uh, is back in there uh, this week. Trying to get some things done on the uh, defense's right side. Second and four, down at the 13. That is Page, 83, in motion. And here's Moriarty. And a fumble. The Chiefs recover. The tight end, Walt Arnold. Stefan Page came up with the recovery. I don't know if they're going to say it was a fumble or not. May have been no. blown dead. Let's yeah. see. Ball with 95 tries to get in there. A little misdirection. And it looked as though he was down before the ball was out. So it's spotted at the 12, and it will be a third down and three. the ninth play of the drive. Blackman throwing end zone. And a flag down. Jerry Holmes covering Henry Marshall. And it is against Holmes. seven on the defense the ball's on the one yard line first down you get a jam within five yards Holmes is out there by himself because the blitz was coming on the key there is Holmes does not see the ball and Marshall although it was a little bit underthrown into the inside saw it and made an attempt to come back and catch it so the ball is placed on the one first and goal from the one for Kansas City a quickie series for the Jets in which Pat Ryan had two of his passes deflected and Kansas City controlling the football eight minutes to go in this first quarter <laughs> Jeff Smith giving the Chiefs a six nothing lead Jeff Smith, an all-purpose back in a second season out of Nebraska. Makovic goes with his elephant offensive line and short yardage. He substitutes two offensive tackles and a guard at tight end in the flanker position as Smith goes over the top, something that the offense of the Chiefs didn't do all of last week, score a touchdown. They've done it on their first drive here today. And here is Nick Lowry, who is 43 for 43 on the season. His last miss of an extra point was back in 83. And that, <laughs> just as the words come out of my mouth, stops the streak of 123 consecutive extra points off the bad snap. Ball, the rookie center, has a little high snap. We'll be back right after this message. 
Back at Giant Stadium, here is that uh, high snap by the rookie, Tom Baugh, leading to this. Nick Lowry, who has been Mr. Perfection, missing an extra point. And Ball, the rookie, knows it was his mistake. Colbert, the punter, is the new holder. It had been Bill Kenny, but uh, when Kenny had some hand and finger problems early in the season, the punter took over those duties and is doing a nice job. So Kansas City off a conventional touchdown. All their points last week against Pittsburgh have been scored via the special team. That's Briggs on the return off a mix-up. And the first two kickoffs for Kansas City have been successful. Big mistake for Briggs. You never want to go back and take a kickoff. You always want to let the back men come forward and take it on the run. As you said, Marv, a big confidence builder in this drive right here for the Chiefs. Nine plays and 67 yards. And, uh, you know, I... We said a little bit earlier that uh, the Chiefs going to need some help from their defense and special teams. They're not going to be able to drive the length of the field. First drive was a big confidence builder for that offense. And the Jets now first down from their 25-yard line. And here is Ryan throwing a bullet, but a short pickup. Lloyd Burris all over Mickey Schuler. And Ryan had his first two passes deflected. In fact. Uh, one was caught on the deflection by the right guard, Dan Alexander. I think you're going to find uh, Ryan looking for Schuler a lot today. He likes to throw to his tight ends. They're good friends. And uh, with the style of defense that the Chiefs play, I think uh, Schuler's going to be catching a lot of passes. Second and four from the 31. Schuler in motion. McNeil. the Chiefs able to cut off Freeman McNeil led by Dino Hackett who leads Kansas City in total tackles and uh, John Makovic said before the game he will go as long as he can with that pulled hamstring he's an outstanding player and has been there ever since the uh, first week in training camp their inside linebacker a uh, sure tackler a you know one of the young linebackers they also have another rookie uh, Colfield a free agent the secondary they've simplified it third down and one from the 34 and it will be close tony page who has been the jet short yarded specialist picks it up art still on the tackle one of the things that walk corey the defensive coordinator for the chiefs has done marv is simplified that defense which allows some younger players some first year players to come in and play. Now what that does is it's not as complicated and they can be more aggressive. They don't do as many things, not as many audibles coming after the uh, man goes in motion. Just physical, line up and play the game. Jets first down from the 36. Ryan had the time. Schuler covered well. Lloyd Burris, the strong safety in his sixth year out of Maryland making the stop on Mickey Schuler. Take a look at Schuler lined up in the backfield this time. This to maybe cause some confusion with the defense, but with man-to-man -man coverage, Burris, the strong safety, just finds him wherever he lines up, goes up and makes the tackle. Burris going to the Pro Bowl this year, probably been a little bit bypassed in the past. He was the most valuable player on that Chief team last year, the same secondary with Deron Cherry. Jets second down and seven. Big handoff to McNeil to Sol for the first down. It was fumbled, and let's see if the whistle was blown. It was. He was down. So a first down for the Jets. Good protection as Sol coming across the field. Ball looks like it is out after he hits the ground, therefore no fumble as we take a reverse angle. Look at the play. Ross trying to do the job and pull the ball loose and Deron Cherry there for the uh, possible uh, recovery. 11-yard pass play, first down, midfield. Freeman McNeil, finding the hole. Freeman McNeil in the past had problems late in the season. He's had an injury hit career but this December has run very well. Hackett and Burris 
on the stop. McNeil having two 100-yard games, Marv, the last two weeks, and his uh, his productivity has gone just the opposite. As the Jets' uh, losing record has gone down, he's uh, played very well. Second down, three. McNeil to the outside. That's the first down. Harry Spaney on the tackle. Spaney, the inside linebacker. And the Jets moving on this series. Upcoming play number eight. Jets opening up with that record of 10 and 1. And as you mentioned last week during our telecast of the Jets Cincinnati game, after 11 games, looked like Ken O'Brien was the most valuable player of the National Football League. But the last five weeks, they've gone the other way. And Ryan throws the middle. One handed attempt by Schuler. And Burris would not allow it. <laughs> Well, they play a lot of man coverage in the secondary for the Chiefs. Here's a look at Schuler. It's going to be working on Burris. Number 34. Burris is right there. Does a nice job. The ball's a little thrown to the inside. Ryan expected him to move a little bit to the inside, and he didn't do it. Now, here's a look up front. Cooper with uh, blocked pretty well, but Cotts, 74, gets in to say a little bit of uh, holiday greetings to uh, Pat Ryan. He caught a local product out of Manhasset, Long Island. It was all over Pat Ryan, who now faces a second and ten. Here is McNeil. Slashing his way inside the 35-yard line. Art Still, another local area product out of Camden, New Jersey, on the stop. And it will be a third down and six for the Jets. 2.45 to go. In this first quarter, the Chiefs lead it six to nothing. A bad snap on the extra point attempt, costing Nick Lowry. Page and McNeil, the running backs. And almost picked off by Burris, who has five interceptions for the season. The pass intended for McNeil. Good pressure up front, Mar, by the Chiefs defensive line. 63 is Moss working on Alexander. Just pushes him back and gets into his face. Ryan having to throw off balance and around Moss, who leaps into the air. Moss going to the Pro Bowl for the first time also. It is a fourth and six, and the Jets going for it rather than for the long field goal attempt. It'd be 51 yards, and I think it's a good call. This is a four-down area, and if you can't, don't kick the field goal, go for it. Off the fake, Ryan on a bootleg. Pat Ryan refusing to go down. Richie Kotite, the offensive coordinator, said the tackles for the Chiefs play wide on nickel situation. We're going to fake the pitch, come back with Ryan up the middle. And also, you may see some quarterback draws because of that defensive philosophy by the Chiefs. 24-yard run by Ryan, who is asking for quiet for the first and goal from the nine. Jets want to run left, Mar. They want to run at Pete Koch and also Cofield on that left side. They feel like they're a little bit weaker than the other side of that defense. Second and goal at the four. Walt Corey, the defensive coordinator. Page and McNeil split. Walker in motion. to the left. The Jets and Kansas City tied at six. Well, 
Well, we said McNeil would be the key to this game, but the big play on the drive was by Ryan, who gives Joe Walton a little bit more of a foot speed. He moves around a little bit more, a little bit more elusiveness. He'll scramble. Nice play by Ryan to make the uh, fourth and seven, fourth down play. And now Ryan will hold for Pat Leahy, who has given the Jets a one-point lead. 13 plays, 75 yards. So with 46 seconds left in this first quarter, Brenda McNeil able to hammer it home. Hackett gets pushed back into the end zone. And a nice job by the Jet offensive line. So head coach Joe Wolf and his Jets over Kansas City by one. Strong drive engineered by Pat Ryan, who has taken over as the starter. Ken O'Brien bent today, a 24-yard bootleg setting up the touchdown, the kickoff from Leahy, taken by Jeff Smith. And Smith with the opening brings across the 30-yard line, a 22-yard return. Billy Griggs involved on the tackle, 37 seconds to go. In this first quarter, a timeout taken. We'll be right back. And the winner today will play at Cleveland next Saturday against the Cleveland Browns. A 7-6 jet lead over Kansas City. Todd Blackledge, the quarterback for the injured Bill Kenny. Bruised his thumb last week. Blacklitch took over. Final seven minutes when Kenny was injured against Pittsburgh. First down of the 32. Mark Gastino is back in on the right side for the Jets. The swing to Moriarty. And Moriarty fumbles Kyle Clifton on the recovery. hit by the aggressive free safety Harry Hamilton unleashing Larry Moriarty had run it for 28 yards off the swing pass but he took a hit from Hamilton early in the season the Jet defensive backs forced 12 fumbles they have not had one in the last five weeks as you see both Carter and Hamilton getting in to knock the ball loose the Jets with a big turnover and we'll be right back after this message Two quarterbacks are in the starting lineup uh, today coming off the bench. Both have played well. Ryan has made the key play for uh, the Jets, and Blackledge is doing very well. And Pat Ryan with 26 seconds to go in this first quarter has a first down at the Kansas City 47. Sideline for Wesley Walker, who has been silent these past couple of weeks. No receptions in Cincinnati. Two weeks ago against Pittsburgh, only two catches, 21 yards, and you know that Ryan would like to get both Walker and Toon involved and as early as possible. Well, this was just a pattern to throw deep downfield. Obviously, they don't want to throw to their speed man, Walker, short like this. He was looking downfield, came off to the outlet, which was uh, Wesley Walker. Picked up seven, second down, and three. The ball on the 40. Freeman McNeil with a change of direction and short of the first down as time is running down out of 10 seconds in the quarter Bill Moss on the stop still Moss and Koch up front and that'll do it for this first quarter here at Giant Stadium and this AFC wild card matchup the Jets 7 Kansas City 6 coach how do you think uh, Pat Ryan is doing so far for the Jets well, I love that call on fourth and six, the quarterback draw that set up the touchdown, and then the two runs by uh, Freeman and McNeil that took it in. I believe would, that went for 24 yards to lead to the touchdown for the Jets. He would love that quarterback draw. He put it in a few of my game plans. So we're underway, second quarter, a third down. And two, the Jets of the Kansas City, 39. And now Al Toon for a very short pickup. Albert Lewis, the left corner, making the stop. As we take a look at the first quarter stats, the, the only telling thing there is the turnover. The 
Chiefs had a turnover on the Moriarty fumble. Out of possession a little bit in the Jets' favor when you would expect that to be that way because of the running of Freeman McNeil. And two did pick up the first down. Marty Lyons and the Jet defensive unit looking on. One of the inspirational leaders right there, Lyons, of this team. He and Klecko and Joe Fields, the inspirational leader. First down from the 37. Off the slant, picking his way, Freeman McNeil inside the 30. Kevin Ross tripped him up. Dan Alexander, number 60, will come around in front of McNeil, and he runs right up his back. That's fine as long as you don't see a red shirt. You see him grabbing a hold of, the, of the Alexander and says, I'm going where you're going. You're a lot bigger than I am. And he picked up nine. It is a second and one at the 28. And Freeman McNeil is off to a fast start. And Page with the first down. Whitney Paul on the cover-up. There's Whitney Paul. Backup linebacker who began his career with Kansas City, then was traded to New Orleans, and he's uh, back here with the Chiefs. So a first down for the Jets at the Kansas City 26. Bob, the strength of this Chief defense is their secondary. Every one of them is a fine athlete. They're hard hitters, and they all have at least four interceptions. In fact, they are third in the National Football League in the number of interceptions this year. So the only trail, I think, it's the Rams and the 49ers, but very aggressive, big hitters. I don't think you're going to see Ryan going deep too often. Led by Deron Cherry, who has nine intercepts, the most in the AFC. McNeil stopped by Cofield. Two and a half gone by in this second quarter. The Jets with a 7-6 lead over Kansas City. Last week, the Jets got off to the good start of the first half. They led Cincinnati. 21-17 at the half, but then sparked by Boomer Esaias in Cincinnati with 35 unanswered points in a shellacking 52-21. Joe Walton not too pleased with that last play. But the Jets early on were getting ahead early in the game. The last five, they've been behind. McNeil. Good second effort by McNeil. And similar to last week, the game plan has been Freeman McNeil left and Freeman McNeil right. Mostly left, and they uh, they like to run him over there behind Sweeney and Bingham with, with Alexander, the right guard, pulling left, and again running at Cox and Cofield. But I think you're going to see the Jets not throwing the ball downfield too much, Mar, because this is a big play defensive team for the Chiefs. As we said, they lead the National Football League in takeaways with 31. Third down and one at the Kansas City. 17. McNeil to the left for the first down. Mark Gastineau sitting with all his friends. <laughs> and staying warm at the same time. The Jets first down at the 13. carries 55 yards. McNeil inside the 10. Kevin Ross, a cornerback on the right, inside linebacker Gary Sveeney combining to make the stop. Let's take a look at this, Mar. Both the uh, right uh, linemen, uh, King and Alexander, are going to pull to the left side, running to the left with Alexander they're probably their best offensive lineman. Bingham gets the uh, seal block. Alexander with a good block and a good runner. And McNeil just bounces around, taking it where the hoe is. Second down and six at the nine. McNeil has carried the ball the last four plays for the Jets. Now play action. And Ryan incomplete. Intended for McNeil. <laughs> 
I, I think Pat Ryan was bounced around a little bit. We just caught the end of it. Let's take a look at the protection. Play action fake. After you run to him, fake to him, maybe you'll hold the linebackers. Cooper 55, and it didn't even see Koch coming. Ryan threw the ball, was looking downfield. Seemed to have uh, thrown the ball behind uh, as Koch got there at the last minute. And it's a third and six at the nine. Pat Ryan has done a good job filling in for Ken O'Brien. Two years ago, started the first 11 games, played well, got off to a six up, two down start, suffered a couple of concussions that, that took him out of it. Here's the swing for McNeil. And McNeil picked up the first down. Kevin Ross with the tackle, preventing the touchdown. Marvy picked up the first down, but there was a defensive man that got picked as Toon comes in here and will set a pick as McNeil goes out into the flat. Now watch the motion man, Al Toon. He bumps a man there, and now he comes in and bumps another man, Burris, right there. Nobody out in the flat with a guard in front. And when you talk about a pick, you can take a jumper behind the pick of Al Toon, who goes 6'4", 205 pounds. The ball of the one, first and goal. The looping pass for McNeil. The Jet offense looking very sharp. Pat Ryan looking awfully sharp. McNeil doing it on the ground. Ryan doing just enough to mix the run and pass. Fakes the run, a little flip. You can tell he's under no pressure because if you were under pressure, you might try and line that ball or throw it a little bit too hard, but Ryan doing a nice job moving the offense. And here is Pat Leahy. Ryan puts it down. And the Jets with a 14-6 lead on the Kansas City Chiefs. Albert, Bob Greasy from the New Jersey Meadowlands on a 35 degree day. The Jets and the Chiefs in this AFC wild card game. A short kickoff played by Moriarty. Pat Leahy looking to keep it away from Jeff Smith. Flag has been thrown. Michael Hopper on the coverage of Moriarty. Referee is Red Cashin. And it is a personal foul against the Jets, who led the National Football against penalties this regular season. Unnecessary roughness. Number 30 by the kickers. First down. All right, that is Nu'u Ma'aola called on the personal foul. And Ryan, who moments ago threw a touchdown to Freeman McNeil, Sitting next to Ken O'Brien. They have a good relationship, the two of them are. O'Brien is very supportive of O'Brien when he was playing, and it works both ways. If you've ever been in that situation, you know you're pulling for each other. Blackleg has a first down for Kansas City. At the 43, look to be some movement, and yes, we have the uh, flags throw Moriarty. On uh, the carry, stopped by Lyons. Carlos Carson. Lined up in the slot, appeared to jump. Carlos Carson just off the injury list. He'd been sitting out with that sprained foot. Illegal motion at the snap is the call. Illegal motion, number 88 on the offense. It's and still first down. That is Carson. Carson's a big addition to this offense. Let's watch the end of this. You see at the bottom right of the screen, Carlos Carson and Carter saying hello to each other and exchanging pleasantries over the holiday season. R Russell uh, <laughs> punishing uh, Carlos for, for jumping. It is a first and 15 back at the 38. Boy screen, Larry Moriarty, the running backs. Moriarty starting in place of the injured Mike Pruitt out with the deep spring. The, uh, the botched snap 
It is covered up. Looks like Blackledge is hurt as he went down to recover that uh, fumble. Todd Blackledge, who is out there replacing Bill Kenny, who bruised his thumb and sprained a ligament. And his index finger is now headed to the sideline as Kenny gets ready. I don't know if it's a shoulder or what. He was pointing to his left shoulder as he pulled out a little bit too quick. The ball is on the ground. Let's see. I think he gets speared when he's recovering the football right there. Yeah, he gets hit on his left shoulder. And yeah, that was Kyle Clifton, the inside linebacker, all over Todd Blackledge. So Bill Kenny has come on. It is a second and 16 at the 37. Last week, Kenny was injured when his hand struck the helmet of teammate Irv Eatman. Kenny said he is throwing well, but he didn't know if he can take snaps. He's not taking snaps all week long. On the handoff, Moriarty is stopped at another flag thrown. The third string quarterback, in case you're wondering, for the Kansas City Chiefs is a first year player out of Kansas by the name of Frank Sire who has not thrown a pass all season. Here's Blackledge prodding back on. Offside, number 99 on the defense, still second down. While we were out for practice yesterday and in talking with Bill Kinney and watching him throw, he was throwing the ball pretty well. He had a, has an injury to his index finger and his thumb on his right hand. And he was throwing well. He said, the thing I've not done is taken snaps. I don't know how that will go. Uh, Blackledge is back in and probably just got a stinger, maybe a pinched nerve for a minute when he got hit on that left shoulder. Second down, 11. Kansas City at its 42. The Jets lead the Chiefs 14-6 midway through the second quarter. Green was tripped up. Crable the stop of Boyce Green. Jets the Mar uh, <laughs> Marv, the Jets are playing the Chiefs to throw the football. Defensively, they're not going to worry about the run. Bud Carson figures that his defense is complicated enough that the Chiefs are not going to be able to run against him. The thing he wants to do is shut down that passing game with Carson and Marshall and Page. That's the strength of that offense. And Bud Carson and head coach John Makovic uh, did not get along well when Carson worked for Makovic in Kansas City. Third down and 12. And it is deflected and caught by Green for a loss. Derlin Moore, a recent addition to the Jet squad. A 14-year pro out of Oklahoma who spent most of his career with the New Orleans Saints in on the play to get a piece of the pass attempt from Blackledge. Well, the question coming in is that would Carson have to use his linebackers and his defensive backs to put pressure on Blackledge? Not that time. <laughs> and Lewis Colbert, a rookie out of Auburn, getting set to punt from his 15 off that 11-yard loss. Kurt Sohn awaiting the punt. And it is a good one. Here's Sohn. 44-yard punt and a four-yard return. Just under six minutes to go. First half, the Jets lead the Chiefs 14-6. And there's Kansas City head coach John Makovic. Enjoying his first winning season after going 6-10, and 8-8, 6-10. And, eight and, eight, and, and this season, 10 up and 6 down. Kansas City finishing by winning its last three over Denver. Beating the Raiders in Los Angeles. And then last week, winning in Pittsburgh. And that after losses to Buffalo, St. Louis, and Denver. So this uh, club that has had its ups and downs, although they finished at 10-6. and six, The Jets taking over, first down. At the 30, 89 is Cleaver in motion. And it's Prima McNeil. 
out to the 34. It'll set up a second down and six. Gary Spaney, the inside linebacker, and cornerback Kevin Ross combining on the stop. Getting back to the situation between Makovic and Jets defensive coordinator Bud Carson. Carson had said that Makovic did not know anything at all about defensive football. Uh, yes, they had their disagreements, of course. <laughs> well, Bud Carson likes to have control of his own personnel. I think the discrepancy or the problem was that he wanted to keep some players, and uh, Makovic had some other ideas. Here's the second down call for McNeil. And a short pickup. Deron Cherry, who played for Carson in Kansas City, said when he first met Bud Carson, he thought Carson was a madman. <laughs> but now Cherry says he's the best he ever played for. It's a high compliment. The different styles in the two defenses, the defensive coordinators, is Carson's is the more complicated. The Chiefs with Walt Corey is very simple. Be aggressive, be physical, and be simple. The type of reaction you bring out when people uh, meet you for the first time. They say he's a madman. <laughs> It's a third down and two at the 38. McNeil tried to go outside, but could not. You know, Hackett up to make the stop. There's Hackett, number 56. He has had a terrific rookie season. And the Jet punting unit has come out. Jeff Smith will drop back. And Dave Jennings will punt from inside his 20. There's Smith, second-year man from Nebraska. And the veteran Jennings. 4-11 remaining in the second quarter. The good special teams and all the punts that have been blocked by this Kansas City Chief team has caused the punters to hurry a lot of their punts and not punt as well. No problem that time. Jennings getting it away. And here's the return by Smith. Good coverage. And the Jets' coverage on punt returns has been superb. A 40-yard punt and a loss of two on the return. Well, backup running back Marion Barber, a question mark for today because of a shin injury, but he's in there and has been outstanding on the special teams. Barber getting to Smith for the loss on the punt return, his third special teams tackle of the day. Just under four to go. First half, the Jets 14, the Chiefs 6. Chiefs first down from their 25-yard line. Green and Smith now, the running backs. Good job, Barber. And it's completed to Marshall. Out of the 29, Jerry Holmes on the stop. An advance of four. Talking with the Jets earlier today, they felt they matched up very well with the Chiefs. Chiefs offense not playing so well. The Jets, the Jets defense has not played that well of late. And uh, offensively, they felt good with Pat Ryan going against the aggressive uh, Chiefs defense. Things have worked out for him so far. Second and six. Kansas City from their 29. And Blackledge rifles it. Intended for Marshall. That is the first time he has looked to go deep. Harry Hamilton on the coverage of Henry Marshall. Marshall just going to go straight down the field as you see him goes inside of Holmes. Now Hamilton reads it the entire way. One of the things, and he went right through his hands, one of the things you have to do, Marv, is look off the free safety, and Blackledge was not doing that yesterday in practice, and again, not doing it today, and it's very difficult to try and complete something down the field if you don't look the safeties off. Now Blackledge has a third down, and six, the crowd getting into it. Four whiteouts for the KC Chiefs. Blackledge under pressure. The combination of Gastineau and Baldwin getting to the quarterback, Todd Blackledge, plus some extracurricular activity. The Marv quarterbacks read the paper and the... Uh, the injured list just like anybody else Blackledge knows Gastineau is back he's looking for him looking around and so is the entire offensive line 
That allowed the other Jets to get in there and put pressure on him. But that is one thing about the presence of a Mark Gastineau. He may not get there, but he can cause everybody else to book his way. And Gastineau has been given full credit for the sack. He had only two sacks this regular season. Here's Lewis Colbert with the punt. Kurt Sohn steps out at about the 38. A 36-yard punt. And the Jets will take over, but the uh, Jets and Chiefs players continue to uh, jaw at each other. So it'll be a first down for the Jets from their 38. Blackledge is looking downfield, but you can be sure he feels the pressure. That's uh, Baldwin, 95. Gassineau grabs a hold and gets pressure and credit for the sack, but uh, and he's going to take credit. <laughs> You know, as some people may like this and some may not, but one thing it does do for the Jets, it tells them that things are back to normal. Play action for Pat Ryan on first down. Can't find anyone. And is brought down by Hackett. Pat Ryan is brought down. Uh, you know, Hackett getting to the quarterback, Pat Ryan. You know, going into today, Bob, many felt and asking the question as you look at the overview of the game, is the Jet game plan to stop the Kansas City defense from scoring but you're right you know you, you cannot take chances when you take a, a team like the Chiefs who are very aggressive defensively and have so many turnovers I'm sure that's one of the main concerns of Walton and Ryan is not to turn the ball over but it has gone the jet way a 14-6 lead we approach two minutes remaining in this first half sold 87 in motion the first down and some more Hackett pushed him out and this is a chant that the Jets have not heard in some time the reaction to Toon who just went 30 yards on the pass play we're just under two minutes to go first half when we resume the Jets will be first down now look they get a man-to-man -man over here on half the field on Toon Single coverage, and he is the greatest in the National Football League. Breaking tackles. Breaks one from Ross. Breaks one from Burris. Gets some extra yardage. End result, Jets first out of the Kansas City. 37. Play action. And Ryan steps up and is able to complete at the 30 to the tight end, Mickey Schuler. Tim Cofield covered him up. It'll be a second and three. The Jets in there hurry up with a minute and 40. Remaining first half now McNeil found the hole has the first down Hackett on the tackle and the clock has been stopped timeout called by the Jets a minute 34 remaining first half will be back in a moment the Jets 14 Kansas City 6 the Jets first down at the Chiefs 23 and Ryan has Schuler over the middle for another Jet first down. Deron Cherry has some difficulty bringing Schuler down. Back short to the hurry up. Short passes, Marv. Short passes. It is a first down at the 11. And it's broken up. Intended for Schuler. Lloyd Burris, the strong safety, got a piece of it. Ball was right there and an excellent play by Burris. The Jets, sparked by Ryan, who took over for Ken O'Brien, has come to life here in this first half. They're doing it with the running of McNeil and the short passing of Pat uh, Ryan. Raymond McNeil, 70 yards on 17 carries. You know, Marv, the other thing that the, the change in quarterbacks has done is allowed Joe Walton to call plays for a different style of quarterback. Here is Ryan, who is 11 for 16, throwing it high and far. He saw Wesley Walker was covered, so he threw it away. Line up and call another play. I didn't like that play. Throw it out of bounds. I'm not going to throw it in there and make an interception. He wants to come out at least with three. One more chance for a touchdown. Pat Ryan, out of Tennessee in his ninth season in the NFL, had an injury-hit collegiate career. 
was used in passing situations in Tennessee's run-oriented offense. He is more mobile than O'Brien. Consider him a uh, solid short to medium range passer. Doesn't have the long arm that O'Brien possesses. Eighth play of the drive. Third down, 10. Ryan with a bump. Touchdown. play and the Jets lead Kansas City 20 to 6. Soon was lined up at tight end Marv. The motion helped disguise where he was lined up and Toon who is a good possession receiver just slips down to the middle of the end zone and takes the reception. Al Toon caught eight touchdown passes during the regular season. He plays 62 yards Pat Leahy adds to the lead. 59 seconds left, first half. And the Jets now lead Kansas City 21 to 6. Let's take a look at that play. Toon lined up at tight end right here. The motion man is going to come downfield. The other back is going to come out. But Toon not getting all the attention because he's not moving. The moving men get the attention. Toon slips downfield and then hooks inside of the linebacker. It's an easy throw for Pat Ryan. Walton calls the plays. And Joe Walton, who has spent a very long five-week period, now has seen his club score 21 on answer against Kansas City. Took a lot of criticism the last five weeks, and it's tough to change quarterbacks. He may have done it a little late, he may have should have done it last week or the week before but the point is he's done it and he's getting production out of that position now you would have taken O'Brien out last week against Cincinnati when the game was out of hand there was no purpose in leaving O'Brien in the game to get battered and bruised and throw more interceptions kick off by Leahy taken by Moriarty Larry Moriarty with a good return Bumped out by Miano, a 26-yard return. Now, during the regular season, Pat Ryan threw only two touchdowns. You may recall back in week number six in a big victory over the Patriots. That's the first of two thrown by Ryan. Winning to Mickey Schuler for 24-0 Jet Lee. The Jets then had a fight to hold on as the Patriots came back, led by Steve Brogan, and the Jets won it 31-24, as it turns out there. The biggest victory of the season. Ryan has started two games this year, both against playoff teams, Denver and New England, and the Jets have won them both. First down from the 31. 54 seconds left in this first half. And Blackledge has Green. Green tripped up. Bobby Humphrey got a piece of him. Block is running. We're down to 40 seconds. Kansas City looks to go hurry up. Second down and seven. Blackledge could not find anyone. And now, picking deep for Carson. And almost picked off by Johnny Lynn. Carlos Carson, the intended receiver. The clock is stopped with 24 seconds left. First half. Blackledge is having his problems down there back there. Let's look downfield to see what the coverage was right there. Now he sees him scrambling around. He'll have no extra time. Carson would have had it were it not for Lynn coming over and knocking the play, uh, busting up the play. But I don't know, Mar. Blackledge seems to be struggling a little bit back there. Seven for ten now, only 48 yards. That includes the 11-yard loss on the deflected pass to Boyce Green. City not taking any chances and he is snowed under and the Jet defensive unit is sparked 14 seconds remaining of the half and a timeout call Bob Crable gets credit for the tackle and John McAvick is not a happy man coming up at halftime 
NFL 86, Bob Costas, along with Ahmad Rashad and Paul McGuire, will be chatting with Don Shula, who is hooked up from his uh, Miami home. And once again, he will explain why he gave uh, Bob Greasy the hook on a couple of occasions. <laughs> and justifiably so, Bob. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> It's a tough decision, though. When do you take your quarterback out? When do you change? It's been tough for Walton. I think until you've done it one time, uh, it, it's very difficult. And it's, uh, you know, Shula has done it a few times. He did it in Baltimore. He did it in uh, Miami. And uh, it's a tough decision. How annoyed were you? Now you can tell. <laughs> That's Shula. Well, we hadn't scored in three games. So uh, it's, uh, it's pretty understandable, even if, even if it's not the quarterback's fault. If you change the quarterback, you get everybody's attention. But it was I'm not saying it You're wasn't implying, my fault. Right, implying it wasn't your fault. He had to make the move. No, no. All right, Bob. <laughs> All right, the punt from Colbert. Good pressure by the Jets. And the fair catch by Sohn with seven seconds remaining. 43-yard punt. But at the start, you mentioned aside from the quarterback change, you felt uh, the key for the Jets uh, would be uh, the play of Freeman McNeil, and once again, McNeil has come through. He's playing very well as you take a look at what he has done today, 70 yards in the first half. He just seems to be the settling force in that offense. Uh, early in the season, O'Brien took it away from him. O'Brien played so well. Toon and Walker caught 20 touchdown passes the first 11 games that it was O'Brien overshadowing McNeil. Now they need to get back to uh, McNeil, and he's uh, coming through today. Final seconds of the half as McNeil carries, and the Jets hear it from this capacity crowd at the New Jersey Meadowlands. Mark Gastineau doing some cheerleading at the far side. The Jets with a 21-6 lead over the Kansas City Chiefs. The winner will go against the Cleveland Browns next Saturday in Cleveland. So a 21-6 jet lead at halftime. And I thought the wise move in the first half, aside from uh, the good play of Pat Ryan, was the fact that even though there were short passes, he was able to get Wesley Walker and Al Kuhn involved very early. Well, he was, and he was moving the ball around, too. You weren't always running on first down. He was running left a lot, but also throwing on first down. Kuhn and Walker have not been in this offense the last five weeks. And you're right. They got him involved, and I think it picks up the whole team. So the Jets at halftime, leading the Kansas City Chiefs. And, Lee, and, of course, the story here in Washington the last couple of days was your missed practice a couple of days ago. You were subsequently fined $1,000 and uh, issued an apology. I, I, think, I think everyone wants to know where you were and, and if the reasons were serious ones. Well, uh, I wouldn't say serious. You know, I think that what happened is during the course of the week, uh, certain things in my contract that I wasn't happy with, and uh, of course that led to something else. I, I reacted out of childishness and not knowing that uh, my responsibility, and I just didn't come. Mm -hmm. Did you offer to take a year analysis? Yes, I did. Yeah, there's no question about it. I'll leak for you right now. And, and what did what did the Redskins say? Uh, they didn't say anything to me about it. Um, my understanding was that uh, they took my word for it, and that was it. All right, let's get to the game now. Eric Dickerson, number one priority. Well, Eric Dickerson is definitely our number one priority, but we can't put a lot of focus on Eric because I think that Jim Eric and they have a lot of wide outs that can really can hurt us. So I think what we're going to have to do is really focus on just the team itself, not one individual. Has this season been especially rewarding for you? Uh, I know that you were, were miffed at not making the Pro Bowl, and, and this year, of course, you're, you're on your way to Hawaii. Well, yes, I would say I mean, it's been a very good year for me, uh, but, but I think last week put a damper on it because of uh, my childish mistakes and the things that I did. I reacted out of, um, out of just selfishness and, and really wasn't thinking of my teammates. So I wish I've had a good year, and um, hopefully How I How did your teammates respond to this? Oh. To my knowledge, I really don't even know. I, I made an apology to them last night in the team meeting. I think that's the most important thing. But uh, I think more than that is that um, I think they're sticking with me because I have to come out here and play today. All right, Dexter, good luck this afternoon. Thank you. Dexter Manley, let's send you back to New York. Right? Uh, in progress, uh, the Chiefs scoring on their first drive, not doing anything in the second quarter. Second quarter stats, no first downs, and a minus seven yards passing, not the way you want to play in a wild card game. Set for the kickoff, Pat Leahy getting set to boot it. 
Jeff Smith, second-year player out of Nebraska, the deep man, flanked by Boyce Green and Larry Moriarty. And it carried by Smith, so they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Now look at the complete first half statistical picture. First downs 14 to 5 and uh, total yardage 191 to 58. The Kansas City Chiefs not doing anything offensively. We mentioned they're last in the league offense and they're and it's carried by Smith. So they'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. Now look at the complete first half statistical picture. First downs 14 to 5 and uh, Total yardage, 191 to 58. The Kansas City Chiefs not doing anything offensively. We mentioned they're last in the league offense, and they're, they're second last in possession time. So the time of possession is really nothing there either. The, the surprising thing or the thing that they're looking for and not getting, no turnovers by their defense and no big plays on special teams. So Todd Blacklett, 7 for 10, only 48 yards. Starting out this third quarter, looking for the pass and it's intercepted Kevin MacArthur on a 21 yard touchdown interception return Todd Blackledge the tight end in the flat linebacker had him well covered the pass intended for tight end Jonathan Haynes, Kevin McArthur, a first-year player out of Lamar, scoring his first-ever NFL touchdown. He was signed as a free agent when Lance Bell was injured. He was in the Jet training camp this summer for a third straight tryout. He had spent some time with the Raiders two years ago. A big moment in the career of Kevin McArthur as Leahy puts it through Ryan put down a high snap and the Jets scoring quickly lead it 28 to 6 the AFC wildcard game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer have you driven a Ford lately by GTE G no GTE and by the United States Marine Corps we're looking for a few good men Side linebacker Kevin McArthur, who just picked it off for a 21 yard touchdown return, certainly enjoying the moment. You look for a switch by the Chiefs. Can you see Bill Kenny for Todd Blackledge? I think you got to start thinking about it. Uh, Kenny has the experience, and they need somebody in there that has that experience that can bring him from behind and score some touchdowns. Again, nice coverage by the Jets, led by Rich Miano to stop Jeff Smith go back and take a look here's Hayes he's going to go into the flat now right here is MacArthur he's going to see it and cut right underneath him as you'll see the coverage is there Hayes was in motion not a very good route MacArthur is right there the ball should not have been thrown to Hayes it should have been thrown downfield or incomplete and John Makovic staying with Todd Blackledge of course we do not know for certain the extent of the injury suffered by Bill Kenny, although he did look pretty good yesterday in practice. First down from the 18, Boyce Green. Perhaps picked up a yard. Bob Crable on the stop. There's nothing that will demoralize a team quicker than to come out in the second half and have your quarterback throw the first pass for an interception and a touchdown for the other team. And Bill Kenny is... Warming up. I think he can throw all right, Marv, as you see him catching the ball left-handed to protect that right hand. It's just a question of how much beating he can take when you get the ball from center on the snap. Second down and nine. Green has carried five times for only six yards. He has been stifled and a rejection by Rusty Gilbo. So Rusty Gilbo using his six foot four to swat it down. But Carson likes the blitz with Gilbo because he is big and strong and he's hard to block by a back in the backfield. This time, 
no chance for Blackledge. And if the man is there, you have to step around or do something. You just don't throw it into his arms if he's leaping in the air. Todd Blackledge began the season as the starting quarterback, lost the job after seven games, returned to the lineup three weeks ago when Bill Kenny was hurt, led Kansas City to the victory over Denver. Overall, he started eight games and went five and three on the same record for Bill Kenny. Now goes sideline and able to complete the Henry Marshall for the first down, Bobby Humphrey on the coverage, 11-yard pass play. Marshall to the right of your screen. It's going to go down and break to the outside. Page, the inside receiver, is going to go deep. Now, if the man that was between him would have come up to cover Marshall, then Blackledge would have thrown to Page deeper downfield. Kansas City first down, just inside their 30. Minute 15 gone by. Third quarter, the Jets 28, the G6. Stephon Page in motion. Boy screen with flags thrown. Green stopped at the line by Barry Bennett. And here's Red Cashin calling the offside against the Jets. Lined up in the neutral zone. Number 94 on the defense. Still first down. And that is the uh, second time this afternoon that Rusty Gilbo, number 94, has done just that. Well, it used to be Joe Klecko uh, lining up offsides, jumping offsides. Now it's um, Gilbo, but uh, mentioned Klecko take a man out of the defense to really affect him. Klecko probably the defensive player of the year the first half of the season when he was in there. Just caused all kinds of chaos for an offensive line. A moment ago, that first down pass to Marshall. Kansas City's first first down since back in the first quarter. Now first and five. And it's broken up. Boyce Green did not hold. Bob Crable covering. Blackledge telegraphing his passes. Um, sometimes, Mark, the quarterback has got to be an actor. You have to look one way, even if you know you're going to throw it to the right. You can't look right the whole time. You've got to look down the field. You've got to look short or right and, and be an actor. Set things up. Yes, he is telegraphing. He's looking too long. Sometimes you set up a defensive lineman. You act like you don't see him, and at the last minute to avoid the rush, then you step out of the way. So you've got to be a little bit of a ham to wear a number in the teens. Like yourself. <laughs> Second down and five at the 35. Juggling act by Page, and he took a hammer. Bobby Humphrey with a hard hit on Stephon Page. So Page on the end around. Humphrey says, I'm covering Page no matter where he is. Here's Page. Here's Humphrey. Page is going to come by and get the ball, and Humphrey's going to come over and say, you're not running away from me. Snap, inside handoff. Page fumbles a little bit, slows it down. Now nobody is blocking Humphrey because he's got coverage. Everybody else went downfield to block. Humphrey says, I've got the speed to catch you. Loss of one, third and six at the 34. The Jets leading Kansas City, 28-6 for early third quarter. Blackledge with the time to couldn't find anyone and has the first down and some more. Blackledge to midfield on a 16-yard run. Good play by Blackledge. The reason this works, man, man coverage downfield. The coverage is too good. Nobody for him to throw to. And then everybody's busy downfield covering somebody. There's nobody in the center of the field to cover the quarterback, and he picks up about 15 yards in a first down. Ball spotted at the 48. A reminder, we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion. Stephon Page in motion. Black is in trouble. And bumped out by Lyons. A lot of effort, though, by Todd Blackledge.
Blacklidge getting back to the line of scrimmage. Lyons gets credit for the sack. Marty Lyons, who made his way back last week despite the sore shoulder, and he has been playing with a, a harness, and he is not 100%. I think John McAvick is probably, as we look at Marty Lyons, uh, maybe going to Kenny pretty soon if, uh, if uh, Blacklidge doesn't get something done on this drive. Andy Page lining up slot left. And uh, the 32nd clock showing a zero. Let's see, they call for the timeout? Apparently he did, so he uh, did beat the clock. And a timeout is called. Uh, the arm to avoid the 32nd uh, clock. Second and 10 at the 48. Jeff Smith picked up two. It'll be a third down and eight. Lester Lyles looking to bounce back from a, a poor game in Cincinnati last week, making the stop. There's Bill Kenny uh, getting a little restless on the sideline. Mark, the Chiefs are not going to be able to run against the Jets. The Jets can stop the Chiefs running game while they're rushing the passer. And you need some experience that Kenny has to get in the ball game and do it. I don't think that, that Blackledge has got the confidence about him that he can bring this team back. And I think if, if Kenny can go at all and taking the snaps from center, that uh, he'll be the man that's going to bring him back if they're going to get back in this football game. Mark Gastineau back in for this third down. And eight. And a first down catch by Carlos Carson. Johnny Lynn. On the stop, a 16-yard pass play. Just a moment ago, Marty Lyons looking very shaky as he headed to the sideline. Look at his left hand there, his left forearm. Let's go back and take a look at Carson coming off the line of scrimmage. Carter forces him inside to Lynn, 29. Carson makes a nice break to the outside. Lynn comes up to make the tackle. Carson's first catch of the day. 85 the tight end. Jonathan Hayes now lining up on the right side. Carson in motion. And here's Green on a sweep. And hit down across the 30 by Kyle Clifton. Boyce Green, who last week returned a kickoff for 97 yards and a touchdown, has averaged about three and a half yards per carry. The Kansas City running game has not done it all season. Mike Pruitt led the team in rushing with only 448 yards on the ground, and he is out because of a sprained knee. He's on uh, injured reserve. The rushing game is 27th in the National Football League, so they're not surprising anybody by not being able to run here today. Marty Lyons is back, second down and three. Play action. Blackledge eluding Baldwin for the first down and has it. So Todd Blackledge doing it on the ground. And you have to be able to scramble, Mar, because there are going to be times when the coverage is downfield. One of the interesting differences today from the Jet defense last week as we take a look at, at uh, the coverage being there is that Bud Carson is not blitzing his linebackers and not committing his defense secondary to one-on-one -on -one coverage. You're playing a lot of zone. There's a lot of coverage downfield, and I think he feels as though just contain them and we can beat them. Kansas City first down at the Jet 24. Kansas City Chiefs did not pick up a first down of the second quarter. They're trailing 28-6. Remaining third quarter. Green and Moriarty are the runners. Blackledge for the end zone and broken up. Barry Holmes got a piece of it. It was intended for Henry Marshall. For every time he looks downfield, there's coverage there by the Jets. He's getting Foster, uh, getting pressure up front from Foster, and downfield he's getting coverage. Just take a look. 98 is Foster in the inside there, as you saw a little loop, a little game. Attics, 51. 
I mean, it's Donnelly 51 and Attic 61, both trying to do some protecting up front. Jets getting, getting a good pass rush off of their front four. Rome Foster, recent addition to the squad. One time Miami Dolphin. 13th play of the drive, second and 10. And here's Moriarty. Harry Hamilton, the free safety, stopping Larry Moriarty, who spent part of the season with Houston. Acquired in a trade back in October. He was a starter for the Oilers. In fact, back in 84 in Houston, he had a career-high 138-yard game against the Jets. He just picked up six, setting up a third down and four at the 18. The Chiefs have not got that speed back in their backfield. They're all fullback types. You got Moriarty and Green, Smith and Hurd. Ever since the loss of Joe Delaney, they have not had a speed back in the backfield. Most every team in the league has a good halfback. Third down and four. And Blackledge completes over the middle. Paul Kaufman, the veteran tight end, appears to be short of the first down. Kaufman, the one-time Green Bay Packer and a three-time Pro Bowl man, is short of that first down fourth and about one saw the signal there the two fists together means double tight end they're going with their their big offensive linemen both all number 76 and attic 61 will go to the tight end positions and number 73 jones react their number one draft choice will go to the uh, moving back big big offensive line crowd urging the defense on Boy screen, following Moriarty, and stop. Derwin Moore, the first to get to Boy screen. It's been the Achilles heel for the Chiefs all year long. They have not been very good in short yardage situations. And a lot of times, Marv, when you go to those big offensive linemen, the defense knows you can't throw. So they really, as we look at it from a reverse angle, they slant toward the blocking back. Derlin Moore, 74, gets in there and runs up the uh, pursuit lane. The Jets with a good defense turn it over. Mark Gaston, Omani Lions, both instrumental in the excellent defensive play by the Jets today. A 15-play drive for Nauk for Kansas City. Jets take over first time their offense has appeared on the field in the second half. Kevin McNeil muscling his way out to the 23-yard line. Strong safety Lloyd Burris on the stop. It'll be a second down. Second and three upcoming. Not many times you have the ball 15 plays and you come away with nothing. At the time, the Chiefs going for it on fourth down and not being successful, and you have to convert third and third and short, fourth and, sh fourth and short, especially when you're down by 22 points. McNeil has the first down, led by the right tackle, Gordon King. McNeil having the kind of day that we thought uh, he might have. Uh, and you can be sure that they're going to continue just to eat up the clock and the yardage on the ground with Freeman McNeil. 84 yards, 20 carries for McNeil. First down for the Jets from their 33. Up front, Joe Fields the center, Guy Bingham, Dan Alexander the guard, Jim Sweeney and Gordon King are the tackles. 89 Cleaver in motion. Stop by Kit Lathrop. To the right of your screen, let's take a look at 70 Lathrop as he beats the, the back, the block back by Bingham, runs around it and gets in there and makes a nice play, almost causing a fumble. Lathrop in his third year out of Arizona State. He plays as the fourth down lineman usually in passing situations, caused a loss of three, second, and 13, back at the 25. Two could not hold on. 
That's the type of pass he usually comes up with. Kevin Ross on the cover. Well, that wasn't uh, Toon's fall. O'Brien thinking that he was going to slide a little bit further to the inside, had the ball hanging inside. Now watch Toon as he goes down, lets the man to the top of your screen clear, and then goes to the inside. Now, Ryan thought he was going to be a little bit further into the center of the field. It's the problem you have, Ryan has, when you don't work with the team in practice a lot. Here's McNeil. And the Jets come up short of the first down. You're talking about the taking uh, the proper number of snaps. Of course, Ken O'Brien, as the starter, has been uh, the key guy during practice sessions. Up until this week, O'Brien has taken all the snaps in practice, and Ryan just works with the scout team, never gets to work with their own offense. I disagree with that because as we look at O'Brien and Ryan getting together, Ryan must have a headache or something. I don't know. <laughs> but I disagree with that. I think I think what you have to do is you're one play away from going to your backup, and I think he needs to get some work in practice with your offense. Dave Jennings in punt formation. Back at a 17. And he's punting to Jeff Smith. And that's the closest the Chiefs have come. Good roll. Here's Smith. Jennings said the other day. As he got off a 45-yard putt, he didn't expect that Kansas City would come up big on special teams because usually clubs will do well after uh, a club like Kansas City has done well. That was rudely interrupted <laughs> by a commercial message as we went into the break. Uh, the Kansas City special team came in with a very impressive record, but uh, they have not done it uh, thus far today. Well, their offense had didn't have done much coming in. Their defense had set them up and their special teams. and. No turnovers for their defense and no big plays for the special teams. First down from the 30 for Blackledge from Kansas City. Blackledge hit hard. Pass intended for Page. Barry Bennett with the hard hit of the quarterback, Todd Blackledge. Jets getting some good pressure from their front three in, in uh, non-passing situations. Of course, Crable occupying a couple of men. Lute 72 allows Bennett one-on-one. -on -one Blackledge, that's not the one-on-one -on -one he'd like to have. Bennett weighs out, weighs him probably 60, 70 pounds. Jets have come up with two sacks and four pressures. And we're told they're still working on the shoulder of Marty Lyons, who did check back in after he was shaken up. Second down and 10. That's Carson, 88 in motion. Back to the ground for Green. Green out to the 33. Picked up three on the play. It'll be a third down. And seven. You have four minutes left to play, and the Chiefs are down by 22 points, Marver. It's going to be a point in time pretty soon here where you're not going to be able to fool around with running plays. They're not working for them, and you're going to have to go to the pass exclusively. Marshall to the right, Carson left. 3.40 to go in this third quarter. the pressure on Blackledge and again Blackledge running for the first down Harry Hamilton tripped him up so Blackledge keeps the series alive running for 15 Blackledge the leading ground gainer on this team pretty soon uh, again it's a broken play coverage is downfield Foster taking the outside charge gets a hand on him Again, man-to-man -man coverage. Everybody turned away running after the receiver, and Blackledge gets downfield for a first down. But the Jets will let him do that all, all the way down the field if, uh, if he doesn't complete any big plays. So Blackledge has outrushed his running backs. First down at the 48. Voice Green on the reception. And Submarine by Bob Crable. Crable had an outstanding game last week, one of the few bright spots for the Jets against the Bengals in Cincinnati, a homecoming for Crable, who attended Moeller High School in Cincinnati, and he has been strong today. He was about the only Jet that played well last uh, week as we see a little screen. Lutz out there blocking on Crable, and a nice sidestep by Crable avoids the, tack uh, the blocker and makes the tackle. Boyce Green has not had himself a, a wonderful day. He's caught four passes from minus one yard. Second and ten. Blackledge to the sideline for nothing. 
Henry Marshall. Wrestled down by Russell Carter. And again, Marv, the reason they're throwing those short passes to Marshall and to Boyce Green behind the line of scrimmage is because the Jets secondary is deep in zones. They're not doing what they did last week against Cincinnati, blitzing and committing their, their defensive backs one-on-one. -on -one. They're keeping a lot of people deep, always a man in the middle of the field, no big plays for the Chiefs, and they're stopping their run as they rush the pass. And one time Kansas City coordinator Bud Carson, now with the Jets, has enjoyed what he has seen thus far today. The Jet defense has done the job. They have closed down the Chiefs, third down and eight. Blacklands going deep, and it's intercepted by Carter. Russell Carter. Bumped out by Larry Moriarty. And the Jets get the ball back. A minute six to go. Third quarter will be right back. The season, in fact, this is first since week 15 back in the 1984 season against the Buffalo Bills. And yet we're told that uh, Carter is the best man-to-man -man coverage team, man on the team as we look at Bill Kenny warming up on the sideline. So the Jets first down from their 40. A minute six left, third quarter. McNeil took a hard hit out to the 44. Let's go back and take a look at the interception. Here's Carter. The receiver that he's throwing to is going to run this pattern right here. Now, Carter is going to sneak back and pick the ball off. This coverage is such that it's a two-deep zone. Carter is not supposed to be back there, but he has vision into the backfield, sees that Blackledge is looking that way, and follows his eyes and goes back and pick it off. That's why I'm saying you have to look around and look the defensive backs off. Third turnover. Two have resulted in Jet touchdowns. Jets second and six at the 44. And Ryan got hit from behind. Bill Moss, three-year man from Pittsburgh, coming up with the sack. Moss has been held in check pretty much today by Joe Fields. This time, Field 65 is beaten. What happens on that, Fields is expecting Ryan to roll a little bit further, and Moss just throws him aside, gets around him, and makes the tackle. Chief's second sack of the day, the other by Dino Hackett, and that is the end of the third quarter. The score, the Jets 28, the Kansas City Chiefs 6 will be back after these words from your local station. See Meadowlands as we get underway. Fourth quarter and the Jets leading Kansas City in this AFC wild card game by the score of 28 to 6. Third down and 13. Catch by McNeil, but short of the first down. Kevin Ross on the coverage coming up following the Jets in Kansas City on NFL 86. We will visit both. The Jets and Kansas City locker rooms, and we'll also hear reaction from the Cleveland Browns who are waiting in the wings. The winner today will play at Cleveland next Saturday. We'll also be previewing the NFC wild card game. Fourth down, and Dave Jennings will punt from his 29 yard line. His fourth punt of the day. Jeff Smith is back. And it is blocked. So the Chiefs get one. Alvin Lewis. And it's a touchdown. Albert Lewis, who explodes, blocking the Jennings punt, which is a rarity. Albert Lewis, who blocked the punt against Pittsburgh last week, that was recovered in the end zone for a touchdown. This is his fourth block punt of the season. Four block punts and one tackled punter, which is in, a, in effect five times he's got there before the punter kicked the football. The special teams again bringing the Chiefs back, giving him some life, putting him back in this ball game, Marv. And that was a solid block by Albert Lewis. Nick Lowry, who missed his earlier extra point attempt, putting it through. And the Chiefs now trail by the score, 28 to 13. 
students are always going places. Now there's a powerful computer that can go with them, the IBM PC Convertible. It goes from chemistry to economics, from ancient civilization to modern civilization. The IBM PC Convertible is a smart gift because students can carry an IBM computer anywhere, even into the future. Nothing works like a tough Chevy truck. The heartbeat of America. That's today's Chevy truck. In the look-alike world of financial services, one stands out. It's one of America's strongest diversified financial experts. A fortress of insurance protection for group medical care and employee benefits. A master architect of financial growth in pensions, mutual funds, and real estate investments. It's the Travelers. Have you looked under the Travelers umbrella lately? The AFC wildcard game is brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. By Budweiser, Beechwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by IBM. Kansas City Chiefs with their first point scored since the opening drive of the game. So special teams coach Crash Gans strikes in the person of Albert Lewis, popular guy. Crash Gans, who was special teams coach here and then went on to Philadelphia and then here he is him. back with the Chiefs. They love him. When the uh, special teams meet, a lot of the players that aren't normally on special teams will go in anyway. Yeah. <laughs> they say, hey, Gans is on. Let's go in and hear him. He's a great motivational uh, uh, speaker and uh, does a great job motivating his players. And uh, here's Lowry with a little pop taken by Page. Tony Page, one of the up men, gets out to the 39-yard line. Again, the Chiefs look to keep it away from Townsell and Humphrey. Humphrey returned one last week for 96 yards. Let's go back and take a look at Albert Lewis's block of the punt. 29 is Albert Lewis. Now he gets inside a 31 barber right there and he gets back and knows how to block a punt. This is one thing that Gann says. A lot of guys don't know how to block punts when they get there. We show them how to block punts. Certainly Lewis knows how to do it. On the kickoff offside call on Kansas City. It's declined. Jets take over at the 39. First punt that Dave Jennings has had blocked as a member of the Jets back in 84 with the Giants. A year that he'd like to forget about. He had three blocked punts. First down from the 39. And again, McNeil were just underway in this fourth quarter. Six-yard pickup. That'll be a second down and four. McNeil, the lone deep back. Schuler in motion. McNeil. Short pickup. Well, the Kansas City Chiefs open the season against the Cincinnati Bengals. And perhaps uh, this a preview for the future as uh, the Chiefs' first touchdown of the season, only a minute and 42 into the game, uh, came on that blocked punt of Mark Robinson to Ron Cherry, able to recover it in the end zone for the score. And the Chiefs went on to win it 24 of 14. The special teams has had a magnificent season. Six blocked punts coming into today, three blocked field goals, a blocked conversion, and five touchdowns in all. Third down and two. And Ryan puts it up. Now two. But the first ball is in a bubble. McNeil recovered. You can see as the Chiefs are trying to tackle the Jet players, they're going for the ball. The first man there didn't get it, but the second man knocked it free. 
Let's take a look at it from the uh, opposite side of the field. Burris is there and knocks it free right there. Number 34, Lloyd Burris. But McNeil for the Jets is there to recover it. The thing that that special teams touchdown has done for the Chiefs, Marv, is given some life back to this football team. They're back in this game, and that missed extra point looms larger right now. McNeil off the left side. And a very short pickup. Art still on the stop. Art still four times to the Pro Bowl and was a second alternate of this season. Led the Chiefs with ten and a half sacks. Second down and nine. Come on, three stop. At the Kansas City 48, 1245 to go. Fourth quarter, the Jets 28 and the Chiefs 13. McNeil has run for 101 yards on 26 carries. And Ryan for Walker. The underthrow, but Walker came up with it. What a play by Wesley Walker. He had a cut back in front of Lloyd Burris, a 38-yard pass play. Give credit, Marv, to Walton for calling the play because the Chiefs are in a similar type of defense to what the Bears would play last year. It's called a, a Bear defense. They're, they're stacked against the run. They're not playing the pass. The ball was underthrown, and Walker comes back and makes a big play for the Jets, but they were stacked against the run to stop the uh, Jet running game. Ron Cherry thought he was about to intercept but instead Walker came back for a second catch of the day well, Cherry didn't go up and catch the ball at its highest point one of the things that a defensive back is caught very early first and goal for McNeil McNeil running hard to the seven Cofield the outside linebacker and Paul make the stop There's that last reception right there. Cherry jumps and waits for the ball around his waist. And Walker gets up a little bit higher and makes the reception. Wesley Walker, who has been very quiet the past few weeks, getting back into the offense here today. Ball placed at the six, second and goal from the six. 81 is Briggs in motion. Ryan for Briggs in a surprise. Touchdown. Billy Griggs, who did not catch a pass during the regular season. A second-year player from Virginia was wide open. And Ryan found him. Joe Walton pulling out all the plays in his bag of tricks. Very similar to early in the season when everything he called went the right way. And here's Pat Leahy. So Billy Griggs with his first National Football League touchdown. Griggs was in motion, started going back across the formation from where he came. That makes the defensive man think he's going back, and he wasn't. Big play for the Jets to answer that special team touchdown by Kansas City. All right, Bob, and as you saw, Billy Griggs with his first NFL touchdown and first ever catch in the NFL, and Griggs involved on the stop here. Well, at least he didn't forget how to catch a pass. <laughs> <laughs> and now Bill Kenny has come on he came on briefly when Blackledge was shaken up in the uh, first half what do you think Bob too late well I think better late than never I should have been in maybe a, a series or two before Blackledge had not done anything since the first drive of the game Kansas City first down from the 40 and Kenny swings it for Green Boyce Green Picked up eight on the play. Crable stopped him. Todd Blackledge, 12 for 21, only 80 yards, and intercepted twice. The interception by the linebacker, Kevin MacArthur, really hurt to open up the second half. It certainly did, and Blackledge uh, 
He's had an up and down year. It seems as though his confidence is, is not what it should be. And uh, obviously, Makovic uh, would rather have started with, with Kenny and played him the full way. He's more experienced. He throws the better ball better to Carson, uh, his favorite target. Carson coming back for this game. But he's in there now, and he's got an uphill battle. Injury on the field. Mark Attucks, the right guard, being helped off. Pat Ryan has had an excellent day, 16 for 23. And not big numbers, though, for Ryan. Uh, again, uh, Freeman McNeil set up or set the table for Ryan to come on and do a good job. Three touchdowns, of course, is, is the production part of it. The 154 yards is not a lot of yardage for, by today's standards in passing, but he gets the job done, ran the offense well, and did the things that he needed to do. Pat Ryan, that equals a career high throwing three touchdowns in a game. Mark Attucks departing the right guard from Baylor by way of the USFL. Second down and three. Penalty flag thrown. Boyce Green running for the first down. He's stopped by Bob Crable. But a marker down. Looks to be an ankle injury suffered by Attucks. I'll check that by uh, Green. Boyce Green is down. And uh, this is Attucks who was uh, helped off a moment ago. On the defense. First down. Offside call on Gerlin Moore. Let's go back and take a look and see if we can see where Boyce Green is uh, injured. Oh, right there, the defensive lineman falls on his ankle. Hmm. That's Crable, number 50. It's uh, going to get you every time right there. Right here, let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Marv Albert with Bob Greasy from the New Jersey Meadowlands for this AFC wild card matchup. And the Jets, after losing five in a row, going up against the Chiefs, who had won their last three to qualify for the playoffs. The Jets with a commanding 35 to 13 lead. Kansas City got on the board first on a one-yard run by Jeff Smith. However, the extra point was missed by Nick Lowry. Then it was McNeil on a four-yard run, plus the extra point for a 7-6 lead. Ryan to McNeil, a one-yard pass play. Ryan to Toon on an 11-yard touchdown pass. The 21-yard interception by MacArthur, first play of the second quarter, extended it to 28 to 6. Boyce Green has helped to the sideline. Kansas City finally got one, a block punt by Albert Lewis. That has been their specialty throughout the season. And it was covered up for the touchdown, 28-13 to score at that point. But Ryan just completed a seven-play, 61-yard drive by hitting the tight end, Billy Griggs, for his first career catch and touchdown. Smith not able to hold on. So it will be a third down and three. Bill Kenny, who bruised his thumb and sprained a ligament on his index finger last week against Pittsburgh, replacing Todd Blackledge. An up and down year there for the Chiefs, Marv. They won the last three before playing this game, then lost three, then won four. Came in streaks for the Chiefs this year. And they did finish strong. In fact, they finished strong last year, but all it got them was six and ten. Carter on the coverage, pass intended for Emil Harry. Talking with Bill Kenny yesterday at practice. He was expecting Bud Carson's defense to be a little bit different. He says he blitzes on second down. He blitzes on third down. He blitzes all the time. He's getting a steady diet of zone and safe coverages today. And uh, Bud Carson uh, changing up. Carson usually likes to come out of the locker room blitzing. Third down play out of a shotgun. Carlos Carson. Picking up the first down, 27-yard pass play. Getting back to what I 
Carson is the big receiver for the Chiefs without the last four or five games with a bad foot. Gets around Carter. Kenny with a good anticipation lays the ball to the inside and allows Carson to run into it. Getting back to what I was saying a moment ago, actually the Chiefs last year finished six and ten after winning three of their first four. But this season able to win on their final three. Kenny throwing end zone intended for Carson. Carter on the coverage. You can see the last three passes that have been thrown by Kenny have been directed at Carlos Carson, who is his favorite receiver. So Kenny is two out of five for uh, 35 yards and has a second and 10 down at the 20. A 35 to 13 jet lead. The Chiefs have got to score, Marv, and score quickly and do some magic with their special teams because there's not a lot of time left in this ballgame. Just under nine minutes left. And that is short of the first down. Paul Kaufman, the tight end, stopped by Kyle Clifton. It'll be a third and three. The ball spotted at the 14. And Kansas City with the four receivers, Harry, Carson, Page, and Marshall. It's not Harry Carson. It's Carlos Carson and Emil Harris. Incomplete intended for Page. Bill Kenny in his eighth year out of Northern Colorado looking back at the bench. Just throws this ball before Page is ready for it. As you see, Page is looking around to see what the coverage is. Throws it behind him. Somebody's undressing him. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Clifton looking for a uh, Kansas City sock. It's a fourth down and three. Marshall to the right. Carson left. And Harry in the slot left. Timeout call by Bill Kenny. 8.02 left. Fourth quarter. We'll be right back. And get uh, Coach Don Shula's thoughts about this game today. Coach? I thought it was real important after Kansas City blocked the punt for the touchdown that the Jets came back with a series and moved it right back and scored to keep that margin there. That was very important for them. Otherwise, Kansas City might have gotten back into it. What do you think about Ryan? Done a pretty good job? No question about it. He's made some key plays for him, and uh, he's gotten a job done. He, it was a steady job for him all day long. Now let me say, you said that uh, you would have gone with Ryan, right? I mean, O'Brien. <laughs> O'Brien, no question about it. <laughs> okay. You know, they got Cleveland next week. Thank you, Coach. And a vintage photo, <laughs> a bespectacled Bob Greasy, <laughs> and a very youthful-looking Don Chulo. It's a fourth and three as we resume Kansas City at the Jet. 14, eight minutes left, fourth quarter. And he swings to Smith. Smith gets inside the 15-yard line. It's a nice effort for the first down, Marv. A little swing pass. You just say, here, Jeff Smith, I'm going to give you the ball. You break a tackle and get up and make the first down. Gastineau, 99, coming from a stand-up position. Eatman cuts him, which allows a nice lane to get the ball out to Smith. Makes a good move and a big first down on fourth and three. So it is a first and goal. Good tackle on Paul Kaufman by Bob Crable. Jet defense certainly playing very well today, coming off of that disaster last week against the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Of course, their offense, the number one offense in the National Football League. It'll be a second and goal at the five. But Carson's got to be pleased with his 
defense today. Moriarty and Smith, the running backs. And Kenny has it knocked down. Barry Bennett got a piece of it. Barry Bennett has been the steady man in that Jet uh, front three last year. Career high of seven and a half sacks. He has remained healthy most of the way and he is back on the right side where he has been more effective. Look to the right. 78 is Bennett as he gets his left arm up. So he had good vision on the quarterback and a quick release by the quarterback would have gotten the ball past him and not allowed him to knock the ball down. Third and goal from the five. Page in motion to the left. They go to the ground. Jeff Smith. Lester Lyles, the strong safety, making the stop at the two. And it will be a fourth and goal. Those running plays, Marv, are critical because they keep the clock moving. The, the, the Chiefs almost need to be in their two-minute offense for the last three or four or five minutes because they need points, and a lot of them very quickly. Twelfth play of this drive. They, they can't stand 12-play drives. They need quick ones. And Kenny throws broken up by Lyles. Intended for Henry Marshall. Lester Lyles, who goes 6-3, was able to get a piece of it to keep it away from Marshall. Lester Lyles, who came in with five and a couple of forced fumbles, number 26. Now Marshall is open, but Lyles sees that Kenny is looking that way and slides off the man he was covering, should have had the interception. The Jets take over at their two, Lester Lyles. In a second season out of Virginia, second round draft pick last year. Made the good play, 6-0-1 remaining in this fourth quarter. Freeman McNeil. With the short pickup, following the Jets and the Chiefs. NFL 86, hosted by Bob Costas, will be checking in at uh, both locker rooms both the Jets and the Chiefs will hear from uh, the Cleveland Browns on reaction as to who they will be uh, facing next Saturday and a preview of the NFC wild card game the kickoff of that game at about two minutes after four o'clock so stay with us second down and eight the ball at the four with five and a half remaining in this fourth quarter there's Boyce Green who had a Michael problem early in this fourth quarter. 89 is Cleaver. McNeil. For a yard, Bill Moss closed it. We'll look at Bill Kenny on the sideline, and the Chiefs have had four possessions in the second half. Two have ended in interceptions, and one of those was returned for a touchdown. The other two possessions ended on fourth down as you take a look right here and those long drives the 15 play drive and the 12 play drive are great in the first half but when you're down by 22 points you need to score a little bit more quickly than that and Joe Walton has to be pleased with what has taken place here today Pat Ryan on the keeper Joe Walton says that the struggling Kent O'Brien is the Jet quarterback of the future, but he is not the quarterback today. Over the first 11 games, O'Brien threw 23 touchdowns, was intercepted only eight times. See, the Jets have fall short of the first down. Over the past five losses, O'Brien had thrown only two touchdowns and been intercepted 12 times. Now you take a look at what he has done the last five games and Marv, when you get in a rut, sometimes the best thing you can do is to be sat down. Now, the quarterback is not going to ask the coach, set me down. The coach has to make that decision, and it's a tough one when it's a quarterback, but there's no question that the, the fresh breath of air that Ryan has brought 
has been a positive for this team. All right, Dave Jennings had his last punt blocked, and the previous one was almost blocked. And now punting from his end zone. And letting that clock run down. As Frank Gans, the special teams coach, may be changing off. Jets had a good look at the alignment for the Chiefs. And in doing so, they took the uh, delay of game. Now the clock activated. Just under three and a half remaining. Gans was a popular addition to the squad. He was to the team. He was in Kansas City with Marv Levy and then uh, went to Philadelphia. And as soon as the Philadelphia staff was fired, uh, Nick Lowry was on his way to the stadium to try and convince John Makovic to hire him and he ran into uh, Deron Cherry coming out and he was jumping up and down he said did you hear did you hear we got Gans so everybody was a couple of steps ahead of Nick Lowry and Gans receiving a standing ovation on the flight back from Pittsburgh last week the special teams uh, sparking that victory over the Steelers despite only 171 yards total offense see what is going on here did they take another delay of game penalty they may be getting it close enough where they can get back and just take a safety and get a free kick I think that's what they're going to do more yes he runs out of the end zone <laughs> so not taking any chances and that is respect for uh, the Kansas City Chiefs no question and a good call smart call going against the top Special team unit in the uh, in the league just get a free kick. Right here, let's go to Bob Costas at NFL 86. Mark, just another reminder about the post-game show. We'll preview that NFC wildcard matchup between the Rams and the Redskins, which starts a little bit after 4 o'clock. We'll also have locker room interviews with the winning Jets and the losing Chiefs. We'll have the post-game comments of Dolphins coach Don Shula, and we'll visit with some of the Browns, the Jets' next opponent. Let's go back to the Meadowlands. Thank you, Bob. So the New York Jets taking the safety, which will lead to the uh, free kick. The prior punt by Jennings led to this and this is what the Jets were trying to avoid you'll see number 29 Albert Lewis make the move Lewis Cooper 55 grabs a hold of Barber who was supposed to be blocking on Lewis shakes Lewis free and Albert Lewis says where is it there, there it is I'll just pick it up for a touchdown and that's been the only second half touchdown for the Chiefs today Albert Lewis in his fourth season out of Grambling he is an alternate for the Pro Bowl and an excellent season. Left cornerback, Albert Lewis. That secondary could have had four players in the Pro Bowl. And uh, Cherry and Burris both are going to the Pro Bowl. Lewis is an alternate. Ross on the other side is probably the most vicious hitter in that secondary. They're a very close unit. And uh, they know they played well today. And now the free kick for Dave Jennings. So the New York Jets showing great respect for the special team unit of the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, giving up the two points and now giving the ball back to Kansas City. Jeff Smith on the return. Out to the 48, took the hit from Matt Munger, a 12-yard return and tempers flare. Jet player involved and ushered aside with two minutes and 52 seconds remaining in this uh, fourth quarter. What shape are the Jets in now? They lose five in a row. They come back strong here. Unless there is a miraculous turn, the Jets are going to go to the uh, next round of the playoffs to face Cleveland on uh, Saturday. They've gained respect, and it's a big emotional lift for them. I think the fact that Ryan came back gave the team a fresh start going into the playoffs. And Gaston coming back, I think, lifted their spirits defensively. And here's Kenny throwing deep and has Marshall. Marshall down to the 26, stopped by Hamilton and Carter. 
And the Chiefs now in a hurry up offense. 26 yard pass play. We're down to two and a half remaining. And the Jets up 35 to 15. And he goes the middle. Herman Hurd, who has played sparingly today. On the reception, Kyle Clifton made the stop. And they move the chains once again. First down for the Chiefs. There's Kenny making it look very easy. Intended to Marshall. Broken up by Carter. It's looking easy because there's no pressure on him in the sense that uh, you're three touchdowns down and uh, uh, you can just, if, if you throw touchdowns, it's great. And if you're not, you're going to lose the game probably anyway. So he looks very calm and collected in the pocket. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New York Jets and the National Football League is prohibited. Kenny is now 7 for 14, 91 yards. Second and 10 from the 11. This is her. Picked up a yard on the play. Two minutes to go. There's the two-minute warning. So a timeout with the Jets leading Kansas City, 35-15. 1985. Bud Grant's Vikings couldn't be in more trouble. Down 23-zip to the Eagles in the fourth quarter. They need four miracles. Here's one. A fumble recovery for a TD is miracle two. And this scoring bomb from Wade Wilson is miracle three. Could this missile for Anthony Carter be miracle number four? Count on it. The Vikes win 28 to 23. NC Divisional Playoff. The Jets playing at Cleveland starting at 12 o'clock Eastern Time. New England at Denver on Sunday. So the Cleveland Browns will host the playoff game for the first time since five years ago, almost to the day. Frozen Lake of Lake Erie, January 4th, 1981. The Browns at home for the Raiders, and the Raiders beat the Browns. Last time a playoff game took place in Cleveland. Mike Davis putting it away with that oh interception. Boy. Do I remember that game? And you can be sure that the Jets don't care if it's that cold or what. They're just happy to be going to Cleveland. Mark Gastineau giving the club an emotional lift. Pat Ryan. A starter today. Don Shula said he'd still go back to Ken O'Brien next week. How do you feel about that? I think you have to go with Ryan. He has brought him this far, and it's uh, it's it's good for O'Brien that he's been able to sit out a game. His batteries are recharged. He found that all the pressure is not on him. He does not have to play like a Superman for this team to win. That Ryan has showed him that, and Ryan is the quarterback next week. And O'Brien is the quarterback next year. Stephon Page, the intended receiver. So Kenny now looking at a fourth and nine. Pat Ryan, 16 for 23, 154 yards. His teammates refer to him as Mr. Guts, a very tough performer. Played with a couple of concussions two years ago when he was the starter at the beginning of the season and led the Jets to a record of six and two. Here's Kenny stepping up. One hand catch. But it's uh, down at the four as Clifton and Crable combine. And that is it for the Kansas City drive as Jeff Smith was stopped. So Smith stopped short of the first down and this crowd responding to the Jet defensive effort. It's certainly something the fans in Giant Stadium are happy to see the Jets coming back winning a game I don't think anybody is kidding themselves and thinking that the Jets are all the way back to where they were after the first 11 games but certainly it's a confidence builder it's uh, something they can gain respect from and they can go into Cleveland and say hey are we this good and certainly when you look at Toon and Walker and McNeil their offense is very explosive and their defense uh, Bud Carson getting the high five big a big battle going on between Bud Carson's defense because they wanted to win this one for Bud Carson because he had been fired from the Kansas City uh, job by John McAvick a couple of years ago. Jets from their four. McNeil able to spring loose. Kevin Ross made the 
tackle, a 24-yard run by number 24, Freeman McNeil. The last time the Jets won a game was November the 16th when they beat Indianapolis here at Giant Stadium, 31-16. And after that, a 45-3 crushing by Miami, a loss to the Rams, to the 49ers, to Pittsburgh, and last week, walloped by Cincinnati, 52-21. will represent the first home playoff victory for the Jets since December of 68 when they beat the Raiders at Shea Stadium. McNeil with 45 seconds to go in the game. It's almost time to get your main running back out of the game free from injury and there you see Joe Walton's accepting the congratulations. Protective gear all over. Ryan played the entire game with gloves on. Didn't seem to bother him. In fact, help this traction when the ball is cold like this it gets a little hard a lot of smiles on the parts of the Jets it's been a long time coming for the New York Jets who suffered a lot in the last month and a half Raymond McNeil finishes with 134 yards on 31 carries John Makovic congratulating Joe Walton as time has run out on this Kansas City Chief 1986 season a good run to make the playoffs by winning their final three to finish a 10 and six and the Jets who entered the playoffs by losing their last five in improbable fashion win the wild card they have defeated the Chiefs by the score of 35 to 15 so the Jets will advance to face the Cleveland Browns next Saturday in Cleveland. Again, the final score. The Jets 35 and Kansas City 15. We'll be back. Uh, led by Marty Lyons right here celebrating the victory over the Kansas City Chiefs. The Jets and the Browns next Saturday along Lake Erie in Cleveland. So the Jets who were beaten in the wild card last season by the New England Patriots this year are able to advance. You are looking live at RFK Stadium in Washington. It's the Redskins against the Los Angeles Rams in the NFC wildcard game. The Skins have lost only one time at home this year, but at least the Rams have decent news from the weatherman. Clear sky, temperatures in the 40s. That should give Eric Dickerson, who is the league's leading rusher, the kind of field that he needs to turn it on. And a key man in the Skins' big play offense, wide receiver Gary Clark, is nursing a sprained ankle. He's expected to see only limited action. Another key factor in this matchup will be the performance under pressure of the two starting quarterbacks. For both Jay Schrader and Jim Everett, this is their first playoff game. CBS coverage of the road to Pasadena and Super Bowl 21 begins this afternoon on the NFL Today. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. So a coach's gamble pays off. Kenny O'Brien is sent to the sidelines. In comes Pat Ryan, and the New York Jets have eliminated the Kansas City Chiefs 35 to 15. They did it in very convincing fashion. With O'Brien watching from the sidelines, it was fourth and six. And Ryan, on the quarterback draw, ran 24 yards. It was perhaps the biggest single play of the game. Ryan used this play to set up a touchdown. Prima McNeil, four yards, and it was a 7-6 lead by the Jets. The Jets went up 14-16. Ryan, his first of three touchdown passes. This one to McNeil. Then with time running out in the second quarter, Ryan hit Al Toon over the middle for an 11-yard score and a 21-6 lead. Then it was the first play of the third quarter. Todd Blackledge's pass is picked off by Kevin MacArthur, who runs it back 21 yards for a touchdown, and the Jets were never headed. Next Saturday, the New York Jets will be on the road. They will play the real sleeper in the AFC, the team that's on a roll, the Cleveland Browns. And Jimmy the Greek, who will be favored in that Brown-Jet game? Or need I even ask? Who's played better than the Cleveland Browns, especially with your quarterback, Kozar, that you think so highly of? The Browns at home will be less than a touchdown favorite. Mr. Walton will have a hard time there.
Timmy, the Greek, there's an issue being raised about the Jets. Uh, if you were Joe Walton, wouldn't you stick with Pat Ryan now, the way he played today, and not go back to Ken O'Brien? Who knows what Mr. Walton's going to do, but I would have to go with Ryan. All right. Well, Jimmy, I know there's an issue about the Washington Redskins. Let's you and I go live down to RFK and our colleague Irv Cross. Irv, what about Gary Clark? We saw him in that tape segment running fairly well. You've been watching him. Will he be able to go against the Rams today? Well, it's still a question mark, Brent, whether or not he'll be ready to start or how much he'll play, we don't know. Coach Gibbs said he would watch him in the pregame warm-up to see how he responded. Now, he's a very unusual athlete. He's a tough guy. You hear that expression a lot. But this young man is really a tough football player. He's been playing off and on all year long with hamstring pulls, and now he has a severely sprained ankle, okay. and uh, they wanted to wait until after the pregame warm-up to see how it came along. One of the assistant coaches told me, you know, even though he's limping now, it doesn't mean much because he can go in the locker room and come out and play for us. So we have to wait and see what his status is like. Of course, if he can't go, Ricky Sanders, who's a big play receiver, will be substituting for him today. Let's go over to Will McDonough and uh, his guest. Irv, thanks very much. We're with John Robinson, the head coach of the Rams. John, you were not happy with the way the Rams finished the season. What have you done since the final game? Well, well, we were just, just really disappointed in our performance against the 49ers. They played very well, but we weren't ourselves. We had a few extra days this week. We went back and really started working on every detail thing we could think of. We thought some of those things slipped away from us, so that's something we felt we had to get back. Well, it sounds like you're going to play a more physical game. Does that mean we're going to see more of Eric Dickerson? Well, we're going, you're going to see a lot of them. I mean, that's kind of a trademark of ours, but we've got to mix it. But we, we've, we've got to keep him working and, and, and try to get control of the game in the fourth quarter. Well, if you're going to mix it, what have you done for Jim Everett in the game plan? Have you reduced it just for him? Well, I think we have to, you know, be limited. He's a rookie. This is a first experience. He's only played six games in this league, you know. And uh, uh, But we also got to let him go. I mean, he's played well in those six games. So we've got to have a balanced approach to it, and we will throw the ball. John, thanks very much. We're going to go back upstairs to your old friend, John Madden and Pat Summerall. John and Pat. All right, Will, thank you. I think uh, John Robinson probably alluded to perhaps the key to this game, and that would be the two big running backs, Eric Dickerson and George Rogers. And if they can keep those two involved in the game, I think it probably controls the whole complex. Huh? I think that's going to be the big thing, you know, because they you know, know that they want to do that. John was just talking about balance, but by balance, he means Eric Dickerson running a lot at least 30 times and then being able to throw the ball a little. Now, we know the Redskins, they want to do the same thing with George Rogers. And I always felt the way to get these great running backs out of the game is just get ahead of them. Make them have to pass. Now, that's what both teams are going to want to try to do. I think the first quarter is going to be very important in this game. I think getting off to a good start, getting ahead, because neither one of these teams is good at playing uphill. And I think the, game, the team that can get off to the best start will have the best chance of winning this game. I think that's a pretty good analysis. Now let's go back to Brent. I don't know whether I was necessarily an emotional lift. I think it was just, uh, you know, first really total team effort we've had in four or five weeks. You know, the offensive line played well. The defense played well. And when that's happening, you know, you get Freeman going. It, it makes it easy for me. That's what I was going to say. Your ace in the hole seemed to be all day is Freeman McNeil, who just ran like a demon. Oh, well, Freeman, you know, if you can keep him in the game, you know, and keep the other team from scoring a lot of points, you know, you can use him a lot. And when you can use him a lot and he's running well like he has been the last few weeks, uh, would be tough to beat. All right, you know, you had a pass to Freeman early in the game as the first touch. And we'll take a look at it here. It was uh, Freeman was all alone by himself. What was this play? Well, it was, uh, it was more or less the same play we ran right before. We faked the trap inside, and uh, Freeman came across the backfield and, and uh, kind of trapped the linebacker inside and left him wide open. One of the things you also did very well is you got two and Walker back involved in the game. Well, yeah, we did a little bit. You know, probably not as much as they would like, but, uh, you know, that's how we like to do it, just short stuff, hit here, hit there, and let them do, you know, run the ball a little bit and see what happens. Isn't it amazing you lose five weeks in a row and you win, and you forget all about those losses? Well, yeah, it does. You know, nothing like winning, and it just takes away all the pain that we've had the last five weeks. We just hope to keep it up. All right, congratulations, and I'll let you join the party okay, as we go back to Bob Costas. Ahmad, thanks very much. Unofficial numbers on Freeman McNeil, 31 carries for 134 yards, a touchdown on a reception, and a touchdown rushing. Stay with us. Five, then the San Francisco 49ers would come east to play the New York Giants, and that means that the gentleman right here, Bill Parcells, would have to take on Joe Montana, so, Bill, is there any reason for you to be pulling for the Los Angeles Rams? In other words, would you rather play the Rams next week than the 49ers? Well, we don't really have any preference, but, uh, of course, the experienced quarterback is a, is a big factor in the playoffs, and uh, San Francisco's playing very well, and Montana's a great one. Bill, you did a great job in RFK. You're one of the few coaches to go in there into the teeth of that crowd and shut them down. 
What's the Rams' keys have to be now to beating the Redskins? Well, I think they're going to have to dominate in the running game with Dickerson, and uh, that means making first downs on first and second down rather than wait until third. I think if it comes down to third downs, the Redskins might have an edge. How'd you handle Dexter Manley so well in that game? <laughs> well, it was a great individual effort. Brad Benson just did a terrific job. We gave him a little help once in a while, but uh, for the most part, it was one-on-one. -on -one. Will the problem with Manley this week... Uh, Will that cause a problem inside the locker room with that team? Bill, how can you read that? Well, I don't really know very much about it, but, uh, hey, it's playoff time, and they're playing for the chips, and they need everybody, and I'm sure they'll rally. All right. Now, what about Jim Everett being basically a rookie quarterback in that atmosphere, in this setting? Uh, what will John Robinson attempt to do with him today? Again, I think he'll try to take the pressure off him by, as I said, making first downs before it gets to be third right. down where the onus isn't on Everett. Now, Mike Ditka, he is so pleased that you're the favorite to win the NFC. He can't say enough good things about your football team. Well, I think Mike is uh, doing a little political work. You know, they only <laughs> lost three games in two years. Yeah. And I haven't heard dynasty, but uh, there's been a lot of teams win championships without winning that many. You know, Bill, uh, when we see Tom Landry on the sidelines, we think about the man, the stoic with the hat. And, and when we see Ditka, we think about him uh, roughing up a player, uh, verbally at least, on the sideline. Here's what we think when we watch Bill Parcells on the New York Giants sideline. And in a flash flash, I jumped back in the bear. Well, I was out of know there was a party going on. There was a fishing <laughs> and a You've uh, never been able to duck that. No, but I'm going to get him one day, man. I, yeah, you I, should sneak up behind him. Uh, uh, I'm going to get him when he least expects it. All right. Make a uh, pick for me. Redskins? I think the Redskins. Boy, he said it reluctantly, didn't he, folks? We'll continue with the NFL today here on CBS in just a moment. At RFK Stadium, the site of the last meeting between the Rams and the Redskins. That was a 1983 playoff game. Washington trounced the Rams that day, 51 to 7. But since then, there have been plenty of changes on both teams. And more on that now from Irv Frost. Irv? Well, Britt, the starting quarterback in the 1983 game were two season veterans who had led their teams to the Super Bowl. Vince Bergamo for the Rams and Joe Theismann for Washington. But today, the Rams are going with a rookie quarterback who did not make his first start until the 12th game of the regular season. As for the Redskins, they also have a relatively new leader at that position. Be it government or football, transitions of power always seem to go off without a hitch in Washington. So when Joe Theismann went down with a broken leg, Jay Schrader was able to step in smoothly. But it wasn't until this season that Schrader felt he was really the commander-in-chief. After last year, I had a chance to get my feet wet, play a little bit, and get a little chance to figure out what the game's all about. Coming into this year, I knew it was going to be my show and just go at it that way. Although this is Jay's first full season at the helm, getting to start five games last year helped him to succeed. I don't think anybody could have predicted that a first-year quarterback in the league could come in and, and do that well. I mean, it just that's something that you just kind of dream about. Now I feel a lot more confident. I've played for a year. I know what I can do. And now it's time to build on that and get better and better. But traders had some tough outings the past three weeks. Nevertheless, in a town that always seems quick to proclaim a crisis of confidence, the Redskins are solidly behind their young quarterback. You have to realize that, you know, this is his first year and he's going to make mistakes. He still has a long way to go. He has a lot to learn. Um, but I don't think it, there's any question in, um, he has any question in his confidence. And I know I don't as a receiver. Any butterflies for this one? There's really not. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Like Jay Schrader, Jim Everett is also having fun. He won the first three games he started. Because he was so new to the league, his initial problem wasn't figuring out opposing defenses, but simply sounding like an NFL quarterback. He uh, took a tape recorder home with him at night just to hear his voice and our terminology and our offense. I just like learning the new language. The more you say it, the, the easier it is. And so you know, I would take the uh, take it home, the recorder home, and, and talk, and it sounded awful. Watching him fool around at practice yesterday, Ever looked a part of a confident veteran. But this is his first big postseason game since the 1984 Peach Bowl. And because he is so new to the NFL, at times, he thinks he is still in college. He's finding the hole. <laughs> we were playing, I think, Dallas, and he said, come on, guys, let's go for the national championship. <laughs> and the guys kind of laughed at it. Uh, 
But that's the kind of leadership I think we really need. As was the case with Jay Schrader, Jim Everett is coming off a lackluster performance going into today's game. So the fact that he got off to such a good start with the Rams is being overlooked. All people want to know this week in Washington is, how much of the Rams offense does Jim Everett know, and when did he know it? Oh, I think he knows it fine. If he has a horrible day, I don't think it'll phase him. I think he expects to be in a lot of playoff games in his career. He's just one of those guys. I think uh, Jay Schrader is the same kind of guy. I mean, those are guys that come out here and say, hey, baby, let's play. Would Schrader have an advantage having started 21 games? I guess you've only started six now as a quarterback in the National Football League. Does that give him a little bit of an edge? Um, you would think so, but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to find out on Sunday uh, what, exactly, what exactly happened. Everybody talks about what the young quarterback from Los Angeles is going to do. Now, Coach Parcells will appreciate this, Brent, because uh, Johnny, Coach Robinson changed his offense at the beginning of the season to simplify it. You know, if you really want to run a sweep, most teams will call the formation red-right, 48 power sweep, G.O. Bob. And they go right, right, with the outside uh, sweep. With the Rams, it's I right, sweep right. I left, sweep right, left. Give the ball to Eric and let him go with it. Very simple offense, but effective. Yeah, very effective. <laughs> we, we've seen John Robinson a couple of times, and, and his mood, he's always relaxed even before a big game. Tell me about Joe Gibbs. He blew up in the locker room last Sunday about the performance against the Eagles. What's his mood like coming up to this game? Very tense, Brent, very tense, because he's been preaching all year long. He wanted this Redskin team to get on an upbeat mode to go into the playoffs you know, flying high. They lost two of the last three games in a regular season, so he's very concerned about that. that they have not played the kind of football he'd like to see them play, except in the fourth quarter last week against Philadelphia when he had a temper, temper tantrum at halftime. Irv, what about his kicking game? How did his field goal kickers look uh, warming up? That's plagued the skins this year. No problem. Their field goal kicking is well secure. I think with Jess Atkinson, he's a confident kicker. As a matter of fact, he goes through a routine where he practices kicking motion by himself without a ball, and he does that hour after hour after hour. He's a pretty good kicker. No problem there. All right, Irv. No problem. Well, we'll see what happens in the fourth quarter. Two minutes to go. Game on the line, whether or not there's a problem. We're going to come back and ask Jimmy the Greek. We've already heard from Coach Parcells. He likes the Redskins, and we'll have more. Are those numbers that the IRS would be interested in, or something else in that book? Great. No, these are the figures that we've been keeping for the last 50 years. And it says here, Rams 8, Washington 8. That makes it a dead even game. Consequently, Washington's at home. They should be a slight favorite. But you know what? I think Dickerson and Redden will outsmart the Washington defense. He's going to run with Dickerson and throw to Redden and then run to Redden and throw a little bit to Dickerson. There'll be five field goals kicked in this game, Brent. Now, the question is, who's going to kick the last one? It's going to be 20-20. Tell me who's going to pick the last one. I know who you want. You want Washington. <laughs> you know, I always go yeah. with the skins at home. All right. Except when they play the Giants. No. When, except when they played the Giants, the Greek went with well, the Giants. Well, give me a score okay. on this game. 23-20. Rams. Rams to win. Did I say it loud enough? You did. Then uh, Coach Parcells, I guess he's not in agreement with you that the skins can handle this one at home. No, I guess he's not. It's close. It's a toss-up. Well, I tell you, it is a noisy, tough atmosphere in which any team has to go and try to win a ball game. And Bill, what affects you the most in a crowd setting like this? Is it the quarterback trying to call the signals or the fact that in the hoopla, the home team gets caught up in it? I think definitely the third down, if you're in the shotgun, the noise, that's the big factor. Okay, well, it'll be rocking down on RFK now. They're going to be introducing the starting lineups, and we get word that Gary Clark will be starting for the Rams when their offense is on the field. Jimmy? I'll tell you one thing, he's going to play, but he's playing hurt, Brent. Well, here comes Doug Reed. Now, he's been a starter for the Rams ever since Jack Youngblood retired. Next him, it'll be Sean Miller on the nose. What about the defensive unit of the Rams, Bill? We haven't spoken about them as a group yet. Very steady, no gambling, good hustle and tough defense. Any weaknesses that you're aware of with this group? No, I don't think so. I think they're going to You wouldn't tell me anyway, anyway, would you? No, I still would. <laughs> we might have to face them. <laughs> and left inside linebacker, number 59 from Washington, Mark Giroux. Jimmy, I can remember 
the last time a road team other than the Giants this year won a playoff game down there it was the Chicago Bears they went in there won the divisional round they went out and were beaten by San Francisco two years ago for the title so it is possible to go in here and win a game it is certainly not impossible the 49ers beat them but they didn't get the score if you remember that game there was a little controversy about the uh, pass interference in that game number 25 from Texas you know the Rams are four and four on the road you know but this is a late game so it puts it into the Los Angeles time from Kansas Number 22 from Washington, Vince Newsom. And that strong There's a player that's been around a long time, been a great safety for the Rams, Nolan Cromwell. He's a college quarterback. Now we'll get ready for RFK to start rocking. And they're going to introduce the defense, and won't it be interesting to hear how the crowd reacts when Dexter Manley is introduced? At left end, number 71. Number 65 from Purdue, Dave Butts. And right tackle, number 77 from Rice, Darrell Grant. At right end, number 72 from Oklahoma State, Dexter. for Dexter Manley and the Washington Redskins. So along with Bill Parcells, Jimmy the Greek, Irv Cross, and Will McDonough, I'm Brent Musburger. We'll see you at halftime. Coming up now on...